If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this special edition episode, Homegirl Super stopped by Super special. of Mind Pump. For the first 45 minutes, we had uh, our good friend, Christina Rice in the studio. You almost uh, messed that up. I almost did. And she did. Uh, she gave Justin and Adam the uh, tarot card reading. Yeah. They, they were a little and scared. We were doing some black magic in here. You guys invited the devil <laughs> inside of you. And we didn't invite any of that. What did you guys think of that? Did you guys think they were accurate or what? <laughs> oh, I felt right on. Yeah. It was, they it couldn't was be more on, accurate. Dude. Yeah. It was, um, yeah. It's fun stuff. Uh, so fun stuff. Then we it talked might to, be trickery. Though. Then we talked to Christina a little bit about her business and- Gave her some advice and asked her some questions, and we really enjoy her, enjoy her podcast, so make sure you go check her out. Uh, and we mentioned uh, Organifi in this episode. Now, Organifi is one of our sponsors. We love their organic, uh, non-artificially sweetened products and supplements. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump and enter the code Mind Pump, you get a full 20% off any of their products. Now, we also mentioned a new company, Planted Design. If you go on our YouTube channel and watch some of our videos, you'll see this awesome mind pump sign behind where we're talking, and it's like made out of moss. It's like one of those living wall things or whatever. Yeah, beautiful, be- beautiful Super stuff. Cool. Yeah, beautiful it upgraded stuff. us significantly. Uh, they have a website, PlantedDesign.com, or you can visit their Instagram page at Planted Design. Then we get into the questions. The first question was: This person is trying to increase their carbohydrate intake. But rice gives them more inflammation. What are our favorite carb sources other than rice and grains? We mentioned some of them. Well, we pl- assumed he was Asian. Plug right. Thrive Market again there. We did. We did. Yeah. Now, Thrive Market is the number one retailer online for non-GMO organic products. We love them. The prices are insane. If you like to shop organic, but you don't like to spend more money, this is the place to do it. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, we got a fat hookup for you. You will get one month for free, $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more, and ready for this? Free shipping. Then the next question was, uh, can you still be overtraining without being sore? In other words, if I'm working out real hard, not getting sore, could overtraining still be the problem? The next question was, what is the difference between NEAT, that stands for non-activity, no, non exercise activity thermogenesis and cardio regular scheduled cardio what's the difference which one's better what are our opinions and the final question this individual sits down all day long watching cameras sounds like they work in security uh, for eight hours a day at the end of the day they are they have no energy to work out in the gym what can they do to get their energy up so they can go work out uh, also let's not forget maps anabolic this month 50% off, a full half this off. This is the deal of deals. It's almost 60. It's like what? It's under $60. Now, MAPS Anabolic is the MAPS program to start it all. It's the best program to build muscle, build strength, and fix your metabolism. If you're somebody who has a slow metabolism, MAPS Anabolic, get on that program, do a slow reverse diet, watch your metabolism amp up. Then when you go to cut, fat will melt right off your body. Also, we offer Six bundles. All. Bundles are where we combine multiple MAPS programs and put them together for specific goals. For example, our most popular bundle is the Super Bundle. It's a year of exercise programming, so it's a whole year planned out for you. So if you're really serious, get the Super Bundle, and you're from now until 365 days from now, it's all planned out, scheduled out for you. Get phenomenal results. You can find that bundle and all our under, other bundles and MAPS Anabolic, the 50% off promotion for July, all at mindpumpmedia.com. Jeez Louise, every time Christina comes in here, it's such a big ordeal. It's not my it's such a big ordeal when Sal's she gets the one it. who wanted to do the tarot card. Oh. Tarot, I know why, because you guys are so scared of doing this kind of shit. Well, you know We're doing what? the Ouija board I next. think it only works if you believe in it, so. That's yeah. right. Well, listen, you, you looked at it, you touched it, so. you've already invited the devil. I rubbed it all over my body, I'm not afraid of it. You actually made love to the devil. I shuffled it and threw it. All yeah. over, all over. We'll do the Ouija board next, right? What is oh, what dude. is the history? Do you know do you even know the history of, of tarot cards and like where they came from, Sal, or do you just like go start doing them? Um, I don't know the history of tarot cards. I was joking, but mm. I do know that it's a it's it's probably based on some of the original pagan uh, religions, right? Cuz mm. if you you look at the the original pagan religions worship things like nature and 
I think one of their gods was like a ram or a goat, which is then later on what I've read is that the, you know, the turns the, into the, Beelzebub. No, the artist for Christianity then would start painting the devil to look like that, give him mm. horns and hooves to try and convert pagans over yeah. to Christianity. Yeah. There all was that. a big push back in the day to uh, convert all the, uh, you know, unbelievers. Well, Easter, Easter was a, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. Easter was a, a, the unclean Easter you know, was a pagan holiday. Did you guys know that? Yeah. No. Yeah. It was a yeah. pagan holiday. I think the original name for it was Oester or something like that. But it was to celebrate spring, and and so like the eggs from the eggs or the rebirth, the uh, bunny because bunnies are so fruitful. And what they did is I think they combined the two holidays and turned. And then it got an awesome rebrand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. That, I don't know if that's one hundred percent true. That's just what I've read. Uh, I see. But yeah, we could. I don't know. Maybe Doug can look up Google the origin, the pagan origins of Easter, and see if that's true. But anyway. Well, East. I was curious to Tarot. You took it to another direction, but yeah. that's fine. You can look up Easter if you yeah. like. Yeah. In this non-Easter time of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, so the 18th century, it was. Uh, it began to be used for divination in the form of teratology and cartomancy. Or car- cartomancy. Is that, div- is that divination? The cards are traced by some occult writers to ancient Egypt or the Kabbalah, mm. but there's no direct evidence. A lot of, a lot of scary stuff there, Justin. Oh you sure God. you want to do this? All the mystics and all that, right? It says a cult. Day. Yeah. 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 So it's all the Illuminati shit that everybody yeah. talks about, dude. Yeah. yeah. How did you get into this, Christina? Um, I've just been exploring spirituality and I don't know, everyone in LA is into it. So then I started getting into oh, it. Oh, that's a good oh, reason. Uh, See, that's yeah. why, that's that's really why I'll never live in they're on every corner. Yeah. Just like veganism. I think <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. No, I won't, See where I that went. That. I yeah. won't help on that. No, I think it's really interesting. It just helps you... Explore your subconscious. Mm, I see. Oh, I can't wait to see what's in there. Subconscious. <laughs> now, I really want to enter this. Now, is it just like uh, like horoscopes where they do a really good job of giving you like really cool, vague, general, yeah, like, very vague information yeah, that you could, you could turn like, oh, that's that must mean yeah. the three guys that I work with. Like it's you all, read into yeah. it. It's all, you're an awesome person. You're like, oh shit, it's true. It I knows am. me. I am. <laughs> it's so accurate. No, that's not. Okay, the point of it isn't to like tell you your future. Okay. Oh. It's just to help you like frame your thoughts in a better way so you can better understand yourself. Mm. Wow. It's, I feel like pro- that's a... it's like probing you in a certain direction. It's not claiming to tell you your future. I, 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 I can see why Sal's drawn to this. I feel like you, yeah. why because it's probing. No, I, I feel like you're. I feel, like I, I feel like that's a great way to like, like to to sell it, but not be specific. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know how they do that. Like, well, oh, yeah, uh-huh. but it's helpful. It's like because you you know the answer for yourself, right? But you just kind of need someone to. All right, who's going first? Now, is it is it on the rise in the in your generation right now? Like, obviously, it's been around for a very long time. They're all over the place. Do you feel like more people your age? Cause I don't have any friends that ever read or used tarot cards. No. I had a lot of friends, so it's not like it's like of my two. I friends mean, some guys world. got into the crystal ball thing. And oh, you know what? Are... Oh, we, what we, really? We, no, what Dude, we did fuck around with, and I still probably have one somewhere in my garage. Remember the crazy eight ball? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, the eight yeah. ball. Yeah, the yeah. Eight Isn't ball. this the same thing? Yeah, that you shake it and it comes up yeah. and, and a little. No, thing. that's it's like a toy. That was a toy. Hold on a second. Oh, it was real, bro. It. It there got me here today. There aren't professional <laughs> yeah. eight ball readers. Like there are professional tarot card readers. Like people who are psychics and mediums like can use these and you can get some intense readings. Mm. Have you guys ever experienced with a, with a psychic? No. Mm-mm. I told you I'll come I'll hook you up. Yeah, I so my so I I have my was it my cousin? My cousin's wife went to a psychic after she had broken up with her boyfriend and the psychic told her basically she was going to meet my cousin. But it was so specific and so weird. She wrote it down. Mm. And then like a few months later, she actually, she did. She met him. And the way she broke it down and explained it, it was so, it's so weird, right? So weird. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean it's real. I told you everything that that one psychic told me came has come true so far. Did they tell you anything about Mind Pump? Yeah, but I told you I'm not going to tell you. Oh, <laughs> well, what's the point Forget then? It. I know, right? Well, like, withhold are you not, stuff Are you us? not supposed to share it? I don't want to share it We're going to be vulnerable and you're not? I don't want it to influence the future because uh, I want to see if Oh, it, it's probably good news. Uh, it's probably good stuff. I man. just want it to, to see That's what like happens. That's like the back to the future but thing. But both yeah. psychics that I've been seeing 
how both brought up you guys. I mean, if it has something to do with you coming to work for us for minimum wage, I think yeah. that that will come true. I think that won't happen. Yeah. Is that not right? Or yeah. Right? No, it was the free intern, right? Is yes. That, no. So. In your dreams. That's available. <laughs> yeah. That's available. <laughs> yeah. It is. That's so crazy how they predicted that. So weird. No. Yeah. But so yeah, weird. she both of them brought you guys up, but everything else has come true. She predicted. The end of my other podcast. Oh, both both of your psychics predicted stuff to do with mind pump. Yeah, wow. they both brought you up. Well, it's like you just sit there. Like I don't say anything, and they just say there. There's a group of three men. <laughs> had, like, had nothing. I don't know any other going. groups of three men. <laughs> it had nothing to do with you wearing a mind pump shirt either, right? <laughs> no, I wasn't. Yeah, we're hard to find, so it's like they couldn't look it up, right? They couldn't. <laughs> <know> what they, <laughs> well, she didn't say mind pump. She, I just am assuming. It's, she she said, said, that was my other theory: was that they're just like really good, like Google wizards. Right. Yeah, I don't think so. You don't think so? They do a little homework ahead of time. I mean, they don't know you're coming in, bro. Do they? Do, they? do you well, set an appointment ahead of time? Yeah. Maybe they have facial recognition. Oh, and, you tell them you're coming mm-hmm. in. Yeah, but other people. I mean, I guess me more so. You could Google, but other analytics. people you couldn't. I'm I, telling you, predictive analytics up. to me uh, is is like demystified. I almost want to be. An, so what, I, I almost want to be a you. dick when I go in. Like, like you know. So what's your name? I don't know. You tell me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Just get like an asshole. They don't expect. Like, you can't take it at face value. Like, sometimes she'll say things and then you interpret it differently. Like, with my health stuff, she was, like, spitting out the names of different tests. And she was like, I'm seeing, it says FODMAP, FODMAP. And I'm like, you mean FODMAP? And she's like, yeah. Like, she's just hearing things. Oh, weird. You know what I'm saying? So it's not always accurate. She'll be like, have you heard of this? I'm getting something coming through. And I'll say, oh, do they mean that? She's like, yeah, that feels right. Mm. You know? So sometimes she, like, the first woman I saw, she, she just sits there and she just writes she just writes all these words like that she's getting, and then she looks and she's reading things to me. Does her eyes and roll in the back? She of her was head. the one. No, <sighs> she was the one who told me that I had heavy metals, and then I found out I did. And then the th- that's kind of weird. Yeah, heavy metal. That not like that. that not like that, Justin. And no then idea. the whole sulfur thing because I found out I'm like intolerant to sulfur. Well, that, that's a really weird thing for like a psychic to say yeah. too. Yeah, that's, that's very she, specific. You know yeah, that is yeah. very specific. That's it was, yeah, that's the thing. It's like she was shooting out specific things um hmm. and even with like my like the podcast i mean i guess she could have looked that up but i didn't it was so specific what she said about how it was gonna end and when it was gonna end how like, much longer after that did it end she told me like at the time i i went to see her in april and she told me it was gonna end within the next eight months and it happened sooner than that wow hmm. um but yeah I don't know. That's what, weird. I, what, was that like a breakup for you guys, or did you guys just decide that it, it was, you weren't going to want to do it anymore, or did you really like take amicable offense or way back when, when I was giving you a hard time about the name of it? No, mm. okay. um, it, it was good. It was like a good ending. We just both were not feeling it. Anymore. Seems like it was the right move. I mean, Sal just came out. I mean, Paleo's just going to get shit on with this whole bread thing that's coming out. Now. What? What is that? Did you read that? Did you hear? <laughs> that? What, what, what I mean, happened? Fuck, I don't think it's going to affect that's them. That's going to blow yeah. up their whole theory, right what there. What happened? Right? <laughs> they, they found artifacts, or they found evidence that these hunter gatherers from some stale ass bread uh, were eating bread. Well, it may gain new that? people, right? Fourteen thousand years ago. Yeah, we've been. Yeah. No, agriculture's only been around for ten thousand years. Modern agriculture. Well, what about before that? It's just the whole idea. Yeah, obviously, I I know that it's a joke. It's a big, but well, but it's weird that they found that. Look, humans ate whatever they could. Yeah. I think that's the bottom line. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's the argument, right? If they especially could, meat. Trust me, if I could go back in time and throw and a bugs. bunch of Wonder Bread at cave people, <laughs> they they'd eat the <laughs> fuck out of it. <laughs> Holy manna! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't be trying to throw out biblical. Hey, I'm shit just kidding. I'm gonna save I'm, yourself. I'm, I'm, I'm washing myself with the Holy Spirit right I'm now. I'm with Justin. I'm with Justin over here. Yeah. You guys are just trying to get off topic. Because you're trying to avoid. <laughs> We're not. Come on, like, like, like Justin and I are not scared of your tarot who, cards. Who yeah, yeah. Throw first. down. Let's throw do down. Do it to Justin first. Okay, Justin yeah. wants to Yeah, because if all of a sudden like I see okay. him possessed yeah. or something like that, I might yeah, pass yeah, on my turn. So you have to ask it a question, right? Is that how it works? Yeah. You have so, to ask it a oh, question. Oh, I have to be involved in this. Yeah, you do. So. In your non-dominant hand. Ooh, I like this. Well, my in your non-dominant. Yeah. The one you masturbate the least with. Actually, this is the one. This is yesterday. Yeah. What do I do now? So shuffle them. So what do I, I just take like a bunch this way and then I stack them back in. So Justin is shuffling the cards right now with your non jerk off hand. It's called your receptive hand. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. That's your, uh, well, I don't know. Because your, the, other the, one the, medical, the medical term. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So while you're shuffling, so you're going to have to ask it a question. And it can't be a yes or no. Now, can he, did, like, is what he kind of question? Is he supposed to be quiet about it or is he supposed to share it out no, loud? No, he's got to say it out loud. I would like him to say it out loud. Yeah, what if, I mean, if I want to know some really answer, uh, I mean, I want you guys to know. 
Oh, no, well, you do. Oh, you okay. share everything on this podcast. You're not <laughs> going to filter now. It's true. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, but like, I don't know what I want to ask. Know, ask about you know? your ask about your tummy issues with the uh, with uh, oh. cheese and stuff like that, bro. Uh, <laughs> no, like, like I mean, it found me- like it found me- she found metal in hers. Yeah. Ooh, you can, <laughs> no, that's psychic that's her bit. psychic though. Uh, you could say something it's got to like, be something like about the future and direction, right? Yeah, I'm guessing you, whatever. You could be like, hey, uh, you know, what do I need to know about my future for my health or something? All like that. right. Yeah. Okay. So like something like that. Hmm. Okay. So, what's going to be the state of my health? Uh, okay. In the future. In the future. Yeah. All okay. Right. Anything specifically about your health? Keep going. Mm. It's good oh, to, to talk about it, it as you shuffle. Yeah. yeah. You know? oh, okay. You need the, you, you need it. the energy to move into I the cards yes. about what you're saying. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Like, um, there's a science to this. Well. Okay. So, am I still going to be uh, experiencing heartburn as as frequently? I mean, or in regards yeah. to heartburn. Yeah. In regards God, to you're really bad at this game. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is new to me. I mean, that's not a. That's kind of a lame question. I want to know, like... Well, dude, why you got to be so lame then? Stuff. Ask a good question. Yeah. Ask really. if you're going to be rich, bro. Yeah. Let's, let's ask if you're going to be, like, like yeah, success. Yeah, yes, yeah, dude. Let's ask, talk about success. Fuck, God. Right. Yeah. That's oh, a, that's shit. a good one. I what do you need your, to know? I have to turn them upside down. I don't give a shit about your tummy. Yeah. Me either. That's why I was like... They were, like, trying to prod me for something better. Because I feel like I could get answers. No, like... Where okay? What what does ten years from now look like? Ten? Why, why so far? Because dude, that's when I Adam know. Adam hates waiting. That's way He's too. He's trying long. to find out about him right. too. So it's it's news again. It. It's news again. <laughs> You're trying to ask your question without doing in it in the next year. Okay. Well, you went from ten to one. How about three or five? God, you guys, you guys are manipulating my results already. Oh, that's a good point. Listen, five years from now, okay? Like, where? What does my life look like? Mm. Success wise. All right. Let's How's see that? This. I think it looks good. Well, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were asking me. Yeah, I'm not. The cards are going to determine that cell. See, now if, he's, okay. if it says bad shit, dude, we're fucked too. Well, well maybe, maybe, I want to know that. Well, maybe yeah. we get rid of him, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bro, the tarot card. Yeah, we got to dump you. You know you're fucked when I ask the I same question. Pruned. It's like, yeah. Adam's going to be filthy rich. Justin's <laughs> broke his foot. Yeah, oh, yeah, shit, yeah. bro. We have a breakup somewhere between that's like the only thing that's fun to think about. <laughs> you know? All right, here we go. All right. So you're going to need to pick four cards. Okay. Oh, this is like a uh, like magic tricks. Yeah. It is. <laughs> this, this is good. this is great. Do this I, is where maybe do I stick is... it on my head after I'm no, done. No, just on the pick forehead? four. Don't oh. look at them. Just pull them. I'll pull them Before up. that, you're I'm drawn not looking. to. No, you look at them. If, oh. Whichever ones you you're can't drawn flip to, them. just yeah. don't flip them. Yeah, so should... bad at directions. I, I feel like I if he was a kid listen. today, they'd be he'd be on Ritalin. Yeah. <laughs> Remind me not to play any card games with this guy. I'm so nervous. I'm I'm fucking nervous for you right now. Why? My palms are sweating. Oh, these are good. Pentagrams in that one. His next five years directly influence me too. Oh my god. Okay. Oh shit. Oh my god. Coming out of you. There's a spider. I don't know about the spider. These are interesting. Oh. So Do you want to hear about pentacles? Because you got three pentacle cards. Yeah, what yeah. are pentacle cards? Let's it see. sounds like testicle. Okay. The suit of worldly possessions, the pentacles often speak to issues involving our home, money, or career. They reflect upon our generosity and greed. Pentacles are ruled by the earth element. When many appear in a reading, it means the focus is on material things, property, income, or the home. Oh. Uh, that's kind of that's kind of weird. I don't know, Justin. What? That's kind of weird. <laughs> Okay. And there's, se- and there's 72 cards in the deck, and only 56 of these cards are pentacles. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are the odds? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I like where this is going. Okay, so your first one is 10 of pentacles. Fulfillment. Abundance. So this is basically... The Fuck card yes, dude. You made it. Is the you made it. <laughs> is the overarching situation, and then the, each of these three are getting more specific, what you need to know about that. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So abundance. So, yes. I like that. Well, let her read it. Let her yeah, read it. Sorry. So the Ten of Pentacles signifies material and spiritual abundance in nearly every area of your life. Fuck yeah, The number bro. 10 usually indicates completion, and in this case, the journey was well worth it. Mm. So be generous, not only with your money, but also with your wisdom. Yes. Provide guidance to those who struggle. You will be rewarded tenfold. This, wow. This really speaks to me. Yeah. I, think yeah. I got yeah. similar cards uh, when I asked I'm becoming question. a believer. Maybe because yeah. 56 of the 72 are the same ones. Dude. No, oh no. God. This one's going to tell you. This, this, this one's going to say, thanks, Sal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the next one Make sure you think, Sal. is the eight of pentacles. Craftsmanship skill. The spider is a true master of her craft. Mm. She weaves against all odds with skill, intricacy, and confidence. The Eight of Pentacles requires a similar approach. Hone your skills. You are close to finding mastery at your craft, so strive for it. Pay attention to all the details. 
In some cases, this card means you need to find a new hobby, something you truly enjoy. Bro, we're not going to fire you. It's obvious. Become good at it. <laughs> you better not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm on the path. Yeah. You're going to have to start. You're going to have to start something new. Start oh, a, oh, oh, I am actually, but I'll talk about that down the road. Yeah, yeah. dude. Interesting. Okay. What are you looking at me funny for? <laughs> <laughs> how was how was your card reading? Yeah. <laughs> he had one that was bad. Or are you try, trying to pretend like that one didn't happen? No. Oh, oh, he didn't tell us yeah. that. Oh, you know what, no, it wasn't this. It oh, wasn't the what? business one. The business ones that I asked the always ones came out are excellent. All really good. Right. Tell us what. Tell us this bad one. What was it about? Oh, it was. It is was, it a secret? Yeah, it is. No. Okay. Oh yeah. Just tell go us. read. No. Don't, don't put him on the spot <laughs> okay, for okay. now. Seven of Pentacles. We'll get it out of them later. Period of contemplation. A curious card. The Seven of Pentacles shows the period of contemplation and uncertainty. You're looking back at all of your hard work and wondering if it has been a failure or a success. Mm. You can't seem to decide. Shouldn't you be reaping more rewards by now? Maybe so, but the mind has control over perception. It's possible your rewards are waiting for you to recognize them. They are not always monetary. Mm. It's because he's old. He's old yeah. and he's like, what the fuck? I should be That's probably like right now. Crushing yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So Let's accurate. See. Oh, it's so accurate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mind blown. <laughs> That's three cards down so, so far. I have the, yeah, we got one the, the little this baby the chick one. left. The last one is a what? This the is the fool. Uh oh. Oh, he is kind of a fool. <laughs> Spontaneity, innocence. The fool is ready to fly. His young wings ache for flight, and with a single step, he leaves behind the comfort of the nest <laughs> to begin the journey through the major arcana. Is he ready? Will he fall? This is a card about beginnings. It points to the side of you that is spontaneous, excited, naive, and inexperienced. Others may doubt your abilities. Be ready to be called the fool. Be ready to fall. No matter what people say about you, this is your journey, and it's already begun. Mm -hmm. See, dude, he's trying to get back his band again, dude. I see, I see, <laughs> I see his posts. I see him practicing the guitar. Bro, you give up that dream, bro. Yeah. You're not going to be a rock star, man. He's going to be the first old Listen, listen to all the money stuff. You no. got it right here. You may be the one calling me the fool. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm the one at the top, you know, reaping the roar. Damn it. <laughs> what, did, what, if what? This, what if this gets together and everybody starts fighting? Like, yeah. no, we should have never done this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then Justin and I will be really mad at you. It's the uh, devil. You guys all can't right. get rid of me. Bottom line. All right. But that was, did that, that make you think of anything, Justin? Um, you know, if I, if I wanted to like project myself in there, I could see like some pursuits that I've mm -hmm. taken. And also obviously like I'm putting myself in something I'm terrible at and then, uh, you know, being judged with that, but then like overcoming that, that's something that I'm always constantly seeking. So well, I'm, you also, for the a job you do right now, you're providing wisdom for people, right? Yeah, exactly. So that, that was kind of cool. I mean, yeah, that, that was, was that, cool. That was neat. And you are the, the jokester. Yeah, you know that's the whole like thing about that. So. Right? No, I know it was it was interesting. Oh, so I'll my. just put it at that. Maybe now it's here's where so ready. I'm so I'm so well, he's no. like getting gamed up. No, what I'm really confused about I'm sweating. Uh, what was the medical term you used for my masturbation hand? <laughs> non -re your your receptive hand. Your receptive hand. Receptive hand. <laughs> you got to put it in the right I would receptacle. Call this a medical term. Well, what I'm worried about is this: I write with my right. I play all my sports with my left. You're ambidextrous. Okay. Is that what so you're bi yeah. you're bidextrous. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the medical term? Which one do Which you consider you dominant? With? I would be considered a right-hander because I write with my Okay, right. then that will be your receptive hand. So I, that's what I'm shuffling. So you, you, hold, you hold it there and you use the other hand to shuffle. Okay. Oh, you're worse shuffler He's than so me. Excited. Well, it's, you know why? Because it's my opposite hand. Yeah. Here. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, it's really weird for me. I think this whole situation. You gotta play a stranger. You know, you know, <laughs> you're right. My mom would be so disappointed. In me right oh now. my god, would she be so oh, mad? My mom. I hope oh, my mom, if you're listening right now, Dude. okay, I'm, I'm halfway not believing this. Okay. Okay. So, what do you want to know? Um, so, I'm currently in the middle of of thinking about purchasing a house or renting, and we're like, this is happening right now, right? So, I I'm not sure if it's a smart investment for me to tie up a lot of money in a home right now, or if I should rent. So, I'm kind of like torn on that right now. I'm torn on if it's a, if it, if I should buy, if I should rent, and where I'm just going to land in the next one to three years. In that area, is that specific? Yeah. Enough? Okay, good. I feel like that's better. I than think Justin. that's good. Do you yeah. have anything else you, you want to say? You about win. That? Um, no, that's it. I, I really like to know uh, where I'm going to be with all that. So, okay. I mean, I'm hoping that these are going to tell me here. <laughs> Well, they're not going to tell you specifics. Well, I feel like that. They'll, I mean, Justin's were very specific. I mean, I think if Justin clarity. was even thinking about leaving Mind Pump, it would be the stupidest thing he ever did. <laughs> right? <laughs> but I was telling him he needs a new I mean, hobby. If you've read it that way. He, he just needs a new hobby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the guitar thing. I mean, yeah. that's obvious yeah. to me. He's been playing. He's got a guy that's coming over. That's an old over. hobby. He needs a new uh, one. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you need to learn how to play the uh, mm. the, the sitar. Did you, oh, you yeah. guys remember when I... Ukulele. One time I did tarot cards and I asked it if I was going to work for you. 
Did you really? Yeah. And what did it say? I'm not telling you. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, what I, I mean, it would already happen if you would just take the minimum wage job and start from there and work your way up. You think I'm worth minimum wage? No. It's not that. No, I just want to no, see you prove really. yourself. I think that's the best of you will come out if, if that's the case. Uh, one, two. You know what? This one right here is the one you're hiding from me, and I feel like that okay, is. Okay, take it. That's, that's the future one. She was shielding you there, dude. I do. I feel like that. Okay. okay. Yes. Right. Excellent. Oh god. Right. Why am I so nervous? My hands are so sweaty. He's right so now. Are you for real? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> yeah. So. It's a, he's weird. He's sitting weird, shaking. He, he doesn't want to get the goat of death. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you don't want to pull that because it'll fuck with your head, right? Even yeah. if you don't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mine look way scarier than Justin's. This can't be good. Oh, oh man. God, I at least had rainbows. We're all stuff. my. We're all my pinnacles. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Okay. Mine look powerful though. They yeah, do. Yeah. Mine look like mine electricity. Look, yeah, mine looks powerful. Stairs, swords. stars, not swords. And okay. a, and a, an eagle with a sword or a, a owl with a That's sword. That's so weird. It's so different from mine. Mine had the mine was like one of them was the king. What was it? The snake with the anyway. Go ahead. You had a ton. We did it like five times. Yeah, <laughs> Until he got what he wanted. <laughs> yeah. He's like, let's do it. Let's well, run this back. Well, let's run this shit back one more time. I like that one. One more time. We did a past, present, future, and he didn't like it. So that one was weird. One. That one was weird. That's and the one he doesn't want yeah. to talk about. Okay, right. so let's talk about. So right now I'm looking. I'm looking at an owl flying with a sword as one card. I'm looking at. A, a bright star with a bunch of little stars. That's probably me and then all the guys that work for us here, <laughs> right on the big bright star. Yeah. <laughs> of course you would think that. <laughs> and then there's a there's a sword with a, almost looks like a snake, but it doesn't have a head. So it's like this crazy eight looking thing around my this sword with lightning coming out of it. That seems very powerful. And then I've got a card here that looks like a stairway to a moon. So the so listeners know what's going on here. Tell us what I this like is. I like those descriptions. Like Not- an infinity snake. That's what it is. Oh, is that what that is? Okay. I just made that I sh- up. Well, that's what it looks like. I guess mm-hmm. not yeah. you say that. Okay. You've obviously been doing this. The, so the top card is the nine of wands. Strength, stamina, confidence. As nines usually imply, your journey is near completion. But on this final stretch, you find yourself growing weary. Doubt and fear are running through your mind. The nine of wands asks you to rally your confidence and realize how far you've come. Lift your eyes and take a few more steps. Soon all your hard work will start to pay off. Okay. Mm. That was, interesting. That's mm-hmm. pretty good. Yeah, stop being weary. What the fuck's yeah. wrong with you? Well, fuck, you guys stress me out sometimes, dude. Yeah. Yeah, got a lot true. of shit to think about these days. That's true. So weary. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> this next one is the Son of Swords. Forceful, determined. A dynamic creature, the Son of Swords is a man of action, not of grace. <laughs> he pushes forward toward his goal with urgency and determination. To top it off, he's very well educated, making him a force to be reckoned with. Usually he's seeking approval from the patient and just father of swords who casts quite a shadow onto his son. Working with this stimulating and exhausting young man can prove to be a challenge. That's fucking Sal for sure, right? <laughs> See, like my father, he's old. Mm. He's like always trying to be smarty pants. You know I what I'm saying? I think this is talking about you. I should you. probably share some wisdom <laughs> on this. <laughs> I re- well, You know what, though? I'm a little disappointed. This, uh, this is not helping my home purchase you decision. You need to just hold your horse. Well, maybe not second. worry, like, right? I should just... Yeah. just just go with oh, it. Oh, yeah, it's true. In regard to the house, you've been weary about it. Yeah, yeah no, that's mm. if there's anything that's been on my mind. But not bad, though. Mm-hmm. Katrina's is. been more than I have. I mean, it's been accurate so far in terms of what's going on. Yeah, no, so far we could definitely uh, say this is... So this one says, don't okay. buy a house in the region of... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is good. This is good. This is the star. This zip code. The star. This is hope, peace of mind. Standing outside on a dark night, you gaze up at the stars and sense glimmers of wonder and hope. Even though you can't find concrete answers to life's many questions up there in the sky, you can't help but feel comforted and renewed. Such is the energy of the star card. It is not about actions or situations. It's simply about connecting to the part of you that is hopeful and serene. This force will bring light back into your life and infuse you with positivity. A lovely card. That's a lovely card. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're totally lovely a stargazer. Card. Let's talk about this Ace of Swords. This one yeah. looks wicked. This is the infinity snake with a sword and lightning coming out of it. You're excited about this. I am excited about this one. I feel like of all the cards... This is the one. This is... This is the powerful one. Like Excalibur. Ace of Swords. Truth. Mental clarity. When lightning strikes, the whole world seems to light up for just one second. It's as though you can see everything, and this vision lingers on even through the storm. 
such as the power of the Ace of Swords. Your mind will become clear, your thoughts precise. It's a great time to make those decisions you've been putting off. <laughs> See, now based off of that, would you think it's probably best in these guys' best interest to just listen to me when I say something? Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is talking to you, not yeah, to them. Your own You're what, trying to turn everything process. and deflect it onto other people no, instead okay. of no, no, no. Okay. using this Sorry. as an opportunity for Sorry, introspection. Sorry, I'm trying to receive, receive it. <laughs> That's <laughs> weird. He never does that. Well, Typical. you know, I, I really like the cards although I don't feel any more comfort about the fucking house, though. I don't That's because it answered it answered it for you. Oh, it did? You're so busy looking for a concrete answer. Okay. It's going to come to you. Oh, mm. just gonna so it's awesome. telling you that you're going to know what you need to do right before you do it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. That's oh, it. I, I need Uncle Isn't that how it always to, happens? To yeah. It yeah. <laughs> it's always, before I do anything. It's always lightest before the lights yeah. go, or it's always darkest before the lights so go. I think it literally go. described you perfectly, so yeah. I think it was good. Very, I don't know. very, very well, good. Well, we appreciate the. Does the, anyone else want now, to read Now, no, do these things. Now, I, I feel like, uh, and this is where I felt like it's like a horoscope thing is, is there any bad ones? I mean, could you yeah. get. Oh, I know, right? There are for oh, sure. Oh, there's definitely bad oh. ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, <laughs> everything is so positive. Yeah, he got a I don't bad know about one. this. That's why he's all butthurt yeah. about it. Oh. Uh. So wow. you know what you know what is interesting about these things. So you know, say what you will or whatever. Believe he still or not, doesn't want to talk about uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. You know what I think is interesting about Maybe this. Maybe we fire. I don't if know. if people when people do this stuff, it, I can see how it would cause people to um, what's the word self reflect, right? Or it could cause people to think about themselves or whatever. So I could see some positives there. Yeah, mm. that's the point because people don't self reflect anymore. Mm. Everyone's mm. looking for the answers outside of themselves, and the whole point of it is. So someone goes to this looking for the answer outside of themselves from someone else to tell them what the right thing is. It just pushes it right back to on do, you. And then it turns it around on you. It says you need to... So how many total cards are in there? Do you know? I think 70, it says. Holy shit, I just made that number up. I yeah, said, no, you were like right. Let's see. 72, um, 56 of them. I was, yeah. a, I was a little disappointed that I didn't get all the pinnacles like Justin did. I mean, that Dude, was I like... Was pinnacled out. He was all bro, pinnacled out. I mean, you asked some money questions and you were told, bro. Yeah. You were for sure I told. Mean, cha-ching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like a, it's like money in the bank. I'm really glad that you and I have stayed attached for a long time. Like, I'm not... I'm not letting you go ever. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean this this money train. Maybe that's why I don't have to worry about a house. Maybe yeah. you take care of it yeah. for me. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe that's after you buy my car. Maybe yeah. don't forget yeah. that bet. I got that. Don't worry. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you're just, supposed to do that. I'll Justin. take care of all you guys. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe the first bit of like flux of money. Maybe that comes he builds in, it. Maybe you're supposed to do something for me first before yourself. For you. Yes. I see. Very kind of interesting. Fit, yeah. kind of well, fair. anyway, so yeah, so your other podcast is done. It is, thankfully. And in your audience. I mean, I loved it, but I was just tired. Interesting. But, is there any new, new, new? No, you know what I want to know from you because you have this opportunity with us and you don't ever ask these questions. I feel like you've got, you're such a go getter. You got all these business things on. Like, don't you have questions on like strategies of what you're doing for the three of us? <laughs> don't you want to ask us? I mean, what sometimes I ask. Hey. I mean, I called you guys are you, when I this... found out the podcast was ending. Mm. That's true. You're that's the first people yeah, I called. You texted us. Yeah, yeah but you could have, would it, why wouldn't you ask us like eight months ago? Like, do you think it's even a good idea? To do what? To do the podcast. Didn't I start it before? No, we met. We met before. I started the second podcast before we were like friends. You think so? Well, I considered us friends right after we met. Yeah. I felt like Sal and I were like, we like you. Well, we... the first day we met, I'm growing. I told you, I said, oh yeah, I'm starting another podcast. Like, I already decided it was already like happening. Yeah. Do you? Do you? <laughs> he just wants everything Adam approved. No, 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 no. I'm actually, I'm <laughs> asking. I, I actually find this is something that like, okay, so we now have. 17 year old a 20 year old a 23 year old a 26 year old and a 28 year old all connected and working with or for mind pump and you know i've been leading people or managing since i was 19 years old so i feel like i and at that time a lot of people that were even older than me so i've seen the difference of what it's like to lead and manage different generations and Mm -hmm. something that i find and i don't know if this is a total overgeneralization but i feel like the millennial generation uh, they're just different when it comes to looking and seeking for help from mm-hmm. others. Mm-hmm. They have this very, I got this uh, type of attitude, which I think can be a strength. I mm-hmm. think that also- f- I wonder if it's because of the ease of access of yes. information and stuff. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like they could just like, well, I'll figure it out. I'll go like research it and look on my phone and, you know. Right, like it took me, it took me a year to like break through to Taylor. 
a mm-hmm. year. I've, I don't think I've ever put so much energy into <laughs> to like like establishing. Look how exhausted. I know. Is. I, really, really, <laughs> like, literally. Eyes. No, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. this is very, I know. And I'm and I'm very curious to to hear your your evaluation on yourself and the and your generation. If this is something that I'm just totally off on, or there is something to this, because you know I was really patient with getting him to finally come to a place where he was seeking advice and leadership from me. And mm-hmm. to me, that's a, a real good leader brings people to that place before, because if you, I could have taken an authoritarian type of position and be like, I'm the boss, this is what you do. And I knew that was not going to work with him. And I bet that wouldn't work with a personality like you. And so I've put in the necessary work of fostering this relationship to get him to then come to me and ask for these questions. I've had the answers for over a year, Mm -hmm. but I'm just now getting him in a place where he's finally doing that. And it just took a long time, I guess, maybe to earn his respect or find that. What do you think it is about your generation or maybe you in particular? I don't feel that way, I guess, about my generation. I think, uh, I'm wondering if you're misinterpreting it. Like, I don't feel like I got this. I have so many mentors and people that I look up to. And I mean, most of my friends are over 30 and very successful. And I learn from all of them. And, but I also don't want to overstep my bounds and Mm. like feel like I'm, you know, I don't want to come in here and be like, give me all the answers, tell me what to do. Like, I'm not entitled. So maybe, I'm not entitled to that. So maybe that's maybe that's what it is. Maybe he felt the same way too. Maybe he feels that like, oh, I, I can figure it out myself and so I don't need to. When it, I think it would be a, just a much a shorter. You got to think back to, think back to when we were that age. Like, uh, I mean- I think we were all kind of like that. I had mentors no, I as well. Wasn't. I was. De- I'm the type of person. I'm still this person. Like if I'm in a room and yeah, especially- but there weren't. They're not times when. Okay, hold on a second. What about when like, we work with someone like Casey, where you're like, let's just do this and show them, rather than asking him and seeing. You know what I'm saying? Maybe there's a little bit of that too. You know. But how would you feel if I like interview you guys for the first time and then I was just sitting there pounding with questions like, how do I do this? How do like you would feel like whoa. I don't know you. Depends on the person. I think we wouldn't mind. No, we wouldn't. I wouldn't mind. We would, especially someone like you. And let me tell you why. Because you, and this is what Sal and I, when we first met you, were already impressed with what you had accomplished. You know what annoys me when people ask a lot of questions? Mm-hmm. When you haven't taken any of the first steps to fucking do anything yourself. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you're, at, you're asking me how to make a million dollars when you haven't even gone out and got your business license or done mm-hmm. like some of the most basic things. Or right? when someone asks and then you give them advice and then they come back again and it's the same thing. Right. right. And they yeah. haven't they made, didn't implement anything. Right. And they haven't done anything. Like that to me is exhausting. It's like, okay, you know, you're not even ready for these answers. Like you need to figure this shit out first before you come. Now, I don't view you as someone like that. I think that you've accomplished a lot, especially for your age already. So no, I don't think it would be that way at all. I think you could actually probably pull on the t-shirt of any of us at any time and ask as many questions as you want. I think all of us would be very patient with you. Mm. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. But I also don't want to be annoying to people. You know. Yeah, but what makes you think that? That's what I'm asking yeah. you. That's what I'm trying, you to, I'm not, trying to get you. You would not we're be over here doing all these fucking tarot cards and, and being about yeah. self, self-reflection. I'm trying to get you to self-reflect a little bit on, 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 on all this uh, and share with us. Well, for me in particular or for in general? my You in particular. Yeah, why do you I mean, think you'd be annoying? I think a lot of that is just the way I am, the way I grew up. Like I always wanted to do everything myself because mm. whenever I asked questions growing up, I like got in trouble. Mm. Oh, uh, yep. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that does. That you got in sense. trouble for asking questions? Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's unfortunate. You wouldn't get in trouble here. Yeah. yeah well, it's different. I be <laughs> yeah, and even like in school, you know, I was always I was always the smartest one in class, and everyone would make fun of me when I asked questions. And I don't know, I just learned to associate questions with. Being reprimanded, I think. Mm. Oh, wow. You know, that's a common one, though. A lot of people are afraid to ask, especially in classrooms and stuff like that. They're afraid to ask. You don't want to be like the know-it-all that's always mm-hmm. answering everything, right? Like right. But just, or just blend at, in a little bit more. Or that you don't know something. Or, yeah, that too. Or that you don't yeah, know something. You don't something. want to look, yeah, show weakness or whatever. Now, mm-hmm. because of that, do you do you recognize things now that you're older that, that holds you back or that it's... It's caused issues for you in your life now. Do you notice those things or do you know what those things are? I mean, I think I'm overly cautious. Hmm. I probably could have taken better advantage of a lot of people that I've met, but I don't like to be so. Are, are you are you hesitant to take risks too? Mm, in what context? Well, in any context. I mean, do you not really? Are, are you a major risk business wise financially? Are you not a big risk taker or are you a big risk taker? I don't really worry about it. No, I don't. I don't think I. 
I don't think I have a problem taking risks, really. You're probably not too risk averse considering your what you do to support yourself at your age. That's kind of a scary thing for someone to do, yeah. right? At, I mean, yeah, it was scary for me to quit my like I had a job right out of college and I could have just stuck with it and been fine. And then I decided to quit and just try and support myself. So So that what do you risky? Since you're you're not very good at asking, what are you like right now in your business? What do you what are you struggling the most with as far as scaling it and monetizing and growing it? What 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 do you find the most challenging part? And I like to ask this question because we do have a lot of not only entrepreneurs on this on this podcast that listen, but also people that are looking to get started in a podcast and what that's like. Like how do you make money doing that? Like mm-hmm. what do you find challenging? Well, something that was really hard for me was the whole time management aspect of things. And I've gotten a lot better with it now. Like I'm one person trying to do a lot. And I really, I have an intern who helps me with some of my podcast stuff, which is really helpful. And I need someone, I like need help because I can't spend all day doing admin shit. I can't spend all day answering emails and doing all of that when I need to create content because I'm not going to be able to make more money until I can make more content. Um, And I'm burning myself out spending all day, you know, I see clients all day and then have to spend all this time doing admin stuff. You guys know, like mm-hmm. that takes forever and it's just stupid bullshit. Um, when I could be writing and making more like content to sell and then I burn myself up because my only time to actually do my work is like in the middle of the night. So I just run out of time. So I think that time management was probably my biggest issue in drawing boundaries with people and but I've gotten better because I've made myself more of a schedule. Mm. Is it hard for you to offload work and be comfortable with that? Yeah. Well, I don't trust anyone. That's. Mm-hmm. I think that's the big problem. I don't mm-hmm. think it's time management. You're yeah. pretty damn organized. You're one of the most yeah, organized you're, people you're I've ever met. Pretty damn efficient. Well, I have me. to be. I have to be really good at time management if I'm not going to delegate more. Well, you're going to kill yourself. Yeah, but I also don't. It's hard to. It's hard to trust people. Mm-hmm. Like because every time I ever give someone else a task, except my intern now is great. She's awesome. I love her. Um. Besides her, everyone else, it's like, I'll tell you to do something and then you do it wrong. And it would have been faster for me to just do it myself. So it's always tough to, it's, I don't know how, it's getting almost impossible to scale a business by yourself. That's really, really hard. Like at some point, you're going to have to trust people to do things for you and so that you can do the things that only you can do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. creating I, your yeah. content, being creative. Like that's, no, you There's can't a lot hire of somebody. freedom in that. Yeah. Yeah, I have it. I have a control issue big time. I mean, for me, like the little things, like I want to be in control of my schedule. And it was just like two weeks ago that I switched over to using a scheduling app, like on the internet, because I wanted to be in control of emailing people and setting up times for clients mm-hmm. and doing all that. And just making that change saves me probably like two hours a day, just going back and forth with people, like trying to coordinate times. Um, but that was like scary for me just because it was giving up control. Like someone I could just go on my link and pick a time. That well, was really scary for I, me. <laughs> share with me all the ways that you monetize right now. So tell me and and not only share with me the ways you monetize then also share with me with, you don't have to give me specific numbers, but share with me what are the, the ones that you make the most money off of. So I know you deal with sponsors and affiliates and, and you make probably a commission on some of the deals that you do with that. I know you do some coaching online. What else do you have? Like what are all the different ways you monetize? So nutrition clients are like my main money. Okay. That's the main thing. Um, after that, my group coaching program, that makes a lot when it, cause it, every time it runs, I'm making a ton at once. Um, beauty counter is my next biggest. What's, what, what's that? Beauty? Beauty, beauty counter. Oh, oh beauty, beauty counter. Yeah. Like skincare, makeup, personal care products. Um, that makes me a good sum of money. I think every... If anyone is listening to this and they are a coach and they are a woman, you need to sign up for Beauty Counter because it's just an easy way to make income. Just use my code. I was telling Jessica. <laughs> no, I was telling Jessica. Like, they're great products. Babe, 32. And anyone who's interested in being healthy, like, needs to switch over to safer personal care products. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, everybody needs to because we're seeing all these issues with you know cancer and hormonal issues. Everybody has hormone problems now. And this is all tied up in what we're using these toxins we're putting on our body hormone issues are so common yeah it's crazy. with everybody um so that's really you know just kind of makes money for itself because people who are coming to you whether it's for fitness or nutrition advice or just health coaching life coaching and, and they're, they're a woman it's yeah an easy, easy transition yeah and then you can switch them over and same with my doTERRA business like the essential oils like I use those products in my own life I use them like 
four protocols for people like to help with the gut stuff um they have really great digestive enzymes all that so that all ties in so i make just money through that um and then that those are probably the biggest things and then like my ebook always makes me money that's yeah. coming in um and then sponsor money from podcasts but that's not really a big Part. Yeah, you have to be really big mm-hmm. before that starts yeah, making like, I don't really worry like about hu- it. huge money and stuff yeah. like that. You know, one of the hardest things I think when when scaling a business is is to know what not to do mm-hmm. um, and where to focus. Yeah, I think I think what you know, you're in a great position where you have you know multiple different line items where you can make and generate revenue, but then where a majority of your time may be focused right now may be in the bulk of what's generating revenue, but it may not be the most scalable out of all of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not. And that's why right now I'm like trying what I know I need to do. Like I've started four more ebooks that I know will make me a lot of money. And I'm like, I need like a month where I just don't do anything else but write. And then I'll have all that built up. Because then it's evergreen yeah, at that point. Yeah, exactly. And then I could just have that. So, but then it becomes an issue of like stopping time to have that. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, of course. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, the you gotta sch- schedule that in. Yeah. Did you have the ability to take that much time off to be able to focus on that? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't think so. That's why I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the reason why I think this is a good conversation. I think a lot of people get stuck here in, in, mm-hmm. in building a business and this is what can make it yep. so challenging is you have found a way to make a, a good income for yourself. And if you have dreams of scaling it, it's really tough because now you're in this area where it's like the thing that's probably robbing you of the most time is probably the least scalable mm-hmm. of all the things that you mm-hmm. do. Right. And you it's know, the I, money right now versus yeah. the money yeah. in the future. generating you the most as you could see, but when, yeah, turning that off is scary. When I first, when, when Doug and I first created maps, we put that together. I owned my, you know, personal training wellness facility and I was in the pro. I was thinking about okay, do I focus full time on this? Do I sell my wellness facility? You're like, what do I do? Then we met with you know Adam and Justin, started the podcast, you know Mind Pump, and nobody monetized. My Mind Pump wasn't anything yet. We were just recording it, and we hadn't monetized anything. And then I had an opportunity to work for a large uh, gym company, and they were offering me a really good salary. I would have made a, a nice deep six figure income. And I knew the opportunities there. And I thought, wow, that would be more of a nine to five, which would give me time to focus on, you know, you know, mind pump. And I could do this. Then and I had to make this decision, like cut what I'm doing now, cut my money off completely, and then put the focus on this dream or this bet that I had made that was, you know, maps and mind pump. And it was a tough decision. And I had a family at the time to support mm-hmm. at a house and I had a family and it was like, okay, like if this doesn't go well, and here's the thing, and, and I think you're like this too, Christina. What 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 helped me make the decision to to do that, to make that decision to cut it off and take the risk, was I had confidence in myself in the sense that if it didn't work, I knew I could get back on my feet. No problem. I knew I could get a job, and I could make money if I had to. I was confident in that, mm-hmm. and so that gave me a little bit of strength. And I think you're kind of like that too. Like I, I'm I'm pretty sure you could walk in anywhere and get hired. You're pretty damn conscientious and smart. So, well, you know, that's what I like about the the coaching that you do right now, because it's probably like you said, it's the one that generates the most revenue. It also is what takes the most time for you. But it's also probably the the easiest for you to, you know, stop doing and then come back in if you needed to. Right. So mm-hmm. this reminds me before we started Mind Pump, I mm-hmm. was virtually coaching. So when I first was started my whole fat to fit journey, I started to get a lot of people probably just like you getting nutrition questions, sharing your own personal journey. And, you know, I started off at a very reasonable price to do coaching. And then I started to refine it, probably really similar to what you do too. The first time I started doing it, I was like, oh, okay, these tend to be the same questions that people need help with. Like I can be proactive and be able to answer these ahead of Mm -hmm. times. Oh, these are the things where people are struggling with these. Okay. So I started to refine it. As I refined it each time, I would start to increase my price. And then I got to a point where I was making really good money, but then I was kind of capped out on how many people I could help. Like yeah. once I hit that like 15 to 30 people, it's just really, really tough to give that really good quality service. And I'm not a very organized person, so maybe you're more organized and you could maybe get out, squeeze out a few more uh, than I could. But at that point, I realized like, well, this is cool that I, I've i built a model that I know can be successful, that I could fall back on to make and generate revenue if need be, but this is not what I think I want to do for the rest of my life. So you know, letting go of that money initially at first is always challenging because it is, it's the, you've already proven that you've built it. 
but learning to look at all the things that you, and we still, to, de, to this day, Mind Pump struggles with this. We got, you know, four visionary minds that are constantly, you know, looking at a business that's growing and thriving and all its opportunities and are like coming up with ideas. And mm-hmm. the thing that I'm always like, listen, if it requires a minute of our time, I don't like it. It's not a good idea. If it requires a minute of us having to do something now. Of every, us actually ourselves doing Yeah, that now. we have to do. If we cannot delegate it or build it and automate it, mm-hmm. I'm not interested in it because we've already proven that. It'll like, slow us down. Yeah. And it'll we'll limit you. Yeah. It, and it will take from other parts of the business that are more scalable mm-hmm. that can continue to generate more revenue. So I think that, you know, you're, you have found yourself in a, in a very similar situation and need to probably look at the areas within your business that have the potential to scale more. And even though initially you might make less and it might be scary to do it. So, and the way I look at it too, with that is there's if, some tarot cards if, for you. If you yeah, yeah, there's your, there's your Adam's tarot <laughs> cards. If you do this, that was like a little mastermind meeting. Yeah. yeah. If, if you do the, no masterminds are garbage. Yeah, if you yeah, do the, $600, if you do the scale part, let's say you focus on an aspect of your business that does start to scale and scale and scale and becomes automated where you're not involved. Then if you go back and think, wow, you know, I am really fulfilled by, by working with people Mm -hmm. one-on-one, you can still do it, Mm -hmm. but you can't do the reverse. It's very difficult to go with working with people all the time, takes up all your time and then also build something that you can scale and that's autumn that's automated. Yeah. So it just gives you freedom to, to be able to do it all. Yeah. And that's kind of the pickle I got myself in. And I've been toying with that because I also realized, I mean, what I thought I wanted four months ago is not what I want anymore because I burnt myself out. And but now it's hard to like, I'm like, I know that I have to kind of wean off seeing people. But I feel so emotionally pulled to these people I'm helping. Like I have people who are, I mean, I'm going to be, I'm going to be working with for the next three to six months. Like, and I know that I'm like, okay, realistically, when can I take a month off? In a year, because <laughs> they yeah. have, you know, um, and I also. That's your integrity talking, too, which yeah. is, that's a good thing. Yeah. I had clients that uh, I trained for 10, 12 years that I had to say bye to. Yep. Yeah, oh, it's hard. I don't know. I, and I also have this issue. I feel like I have a lot of mental clutter, which is I'm the type of person that works best when I'm just focused on one thing at a time. And so for me, I feel like my productivity has gone down because I'm like, okay, client now, podcast then, blog post then, like work on ebook later. I'm like, I can't even focus Instagram here, like video there. I, you know, it's just too much in my head. So I can't focus on any one thing. So that's why, yeah, I don't know. But I mean, I've actually, I don't know. It's interesting that we're talking about this right now. Cause like this week I've been talking to people and I'm like debating just getting a side job and then stopping clients so that I can just focus on my own stuff mm. at, that I can scale. Mm. But I don't know. It's a lot. Imagine if you would have taken that opportunity with Mind Pump just yeah. to make a little side money on the Not side. for Middle, minimum wage. Crazy, right? It'll be a little bit higher. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a little bit higher than <laughs> yeah. minimum wage. It wouldn't be an hourly it'd job. It'd be you, negotiable. I think what we were originally talking about doing is giving you like a very minimal base salary that gives you the comfort of like, okay, I've got my living paid for. You could still maybe coach a few clients on the side so you, you could survive. And then the now allows you to focus your energy on the things that could probably scale your business. There's a lot of opportunities mm. here too. But I wouldn't yeah. have my Weird. living paid for because San Jose is more expensive than LA. Sure you would sure yeah. you would yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. look how much space the studio has Come on. yeah Look at that right back there <laughs> you want me to live in the closet. corner you know yeah, what's yeah. funny I, I if i didn't have if i didn't have kids i think all of us well, he needs a hammock yeah, yeah. 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 All live yeah. i'm just I kidding found. you're not gonna live nah. taylor's looking for a roommate you know what i'm saying like hey <laughs> san jose uh, cool fight over the hairspray <laughs> he's totally cool san jose is way yeah. better than la i can't live in san jose so much better you live in la how can you say that unless i was getting a huge sum of money i don't think i could live in san jose oh see that's backwards thank you what is there to do here Work, become wow. successful, work. free. Wow. I with, told Sal, do you guys people? know how much bigger you guys would be if you weren't in San Jose? Mm. Oh, if we were in LA? I mean, yeah. Oh, maybe. You'd explode. Maybe. Like, you, 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 know what, you know what's, you know what's funny? Do you oh, know that? It's yeah, true. You, oh, let me tell you something, though. And this is this, getting back to the business and the importance of it. Exploding is not the priority of Mind Pump. Building a efficient business that runs almost by itself is more important than exploding. In fact, but what if you could do both? You're well, well like first you have to do what I would. We're well, working into that. Here's I the mean. thing: like, if we were to explode right now, and right now we're in a better position than what we were a year ago, but we used to talk about this. The worst thing that could have happened to us was Mind Pump to go viral. 
us to go viral when we did not have the systems in place to sustain a long-term business would be silly. This is the mistake I see fucking so many people in our space making. They're so caught up on hacking the algorithm, on becoming famous, on growing and getting out and reaching more people that they have not put the infrastructure in to sustain that long term. It's building on a, I, on a sand foundation. I yeah, agree, but do you not feel like right now you're at a place boat. where it could, it could help you? No. We're at a perfect, now? we're at a beautiful place we're, right we're, now. We're yeah. right mind pump quarter, exactly. mind pump quarter over quarter slowly, consistently grows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. I would not, if we had some. Like a good weight training routine. Yeah. You know? It is. It's not a totally. quick, Trying you know, lose yeah, lose fat in 30 <laughs> days type of deal. I think this is a mistake the generation right now that uses all these social platforms makes is they we're all chasing to get 100,000 subscribers. Like, no, I, I don't want a crazy amount of subscribers if we don't have a really sufficient way to monetize correctly. And a lot of businesses don't. And yeah, you would make a lot of money. You'd have a flood of it right away. But the same people we that- We care about conversion rates. The same people that get a flood like that- yeah. <laughs> don't know what to do with that money mm-hmm. you know and 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 i would even like someone like yourself like what if i told you like you know christina i have five million dollars i want to invest in you you know can you honestly say and maybe and someone listening around, oh yeah i know exactly what i would do with that five million well you might know know exactly what you would want to do with that five million but whether that's a smart strategy or not most people have no fucking clue yeah, and most like, would you know where wrong. to spend that you know where did you know where to invest that Right. That's a good question. So it I pay- mean, I know what I do. That's different. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's yeah. different. Yeah, a trip to Fiji is not good. <laughs> no, that's not what I do. No, but I'm, I exactly. So you know, what yeah, would we you have do? a soccer stadium now here? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> what would you do? We're if, moving up. What would world. you do with five million dollars? I mean, I would just. I'm giving a, it to you. I would put it in the bank and I'd live and focus and I'd bust out like five books and a few programs that I can sell. Oh, well, that's too much money for doing that. You <laughs> right. see what I'm saying? No, why? Right. No, no. What I'm saying is you don't need $5 million for that. Right. So the point of what Adam is saying is you don't well, know. Who says you have to use it all? No, well, well, that's the point. The point is, are you in a position to take an influx of money and maximize it? Right. Mm. That's the question. Mm-hmm. Not whether or not, oh, that'd be making like, me comfortable and like I can. You're watering all the plants yeah, that are You don't are need out 5 there. million. How much do you really no, need to I do that? 100 five grand, million. 50 I don't grand? Need 5 million. Dollars. Exactly. You see right. what I'm saying? Right. So you want to well, be in a position. What would, what would happen if you went viral tomorrow? Right. What if this episode blows your business up and all of a sudden anything and everything you monetize makes you a quick fucking $2 million? Like real quick. Like literally 100 million people all and fall into your podcast, your YouTube, all the stuff that you're doing, your Instagram, everything, and they all the things that we talked about that you monetize. Mm-hmm. Boom, you're getting the max amount of clients for the max dollar. You're commissioning out on all those things because you just mm-hmm. got this flux of people and you make a quick million to two million dollars. What do you do with that money? I mean, I told you, I just I wouldn't do anything different no matter how much money it is. That's, mm-hmm. that's my point. That's my point. You would want to be able to, you would want to know where to reinvest that back into the business so it generates that five times over and doesn't stop for the next That's three a five. good position to be in. Right. And that's why slow growth done the right way is better. This is why you see a lot of businesses flash in the pan. They mm-hmm. explode and then disappear. It's like a house of cards. I feel like we're arguing in a circle because my point is not that you should have gone this moved to a, LA originally. No, 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 my no. My point no. was just that if you were in LA right now, you would grow more. And that's my point why I don't want to live in Maybe. San Jose. Being in LA is advantageous for here. me because I get access to people. Who who's out here besides you? That's all we, you need. We give you the access. That's all you need. Yeah. <laughs> no, but <laughs> that's, guests all, come here. that's all you fucking need. That's not yeah. true. Sure. Absolutely. That's not true. There's so many people who are in LA. Like I make so many connections because of that. And like, okay, I asked you why you wouldn't move. You have a family. Sure. What about me? Yeah. Like I have a life there. Mm-hmm. I don't, like that's where all my friends are. Not really. Most of your life is maxed out with all the work you're doing. Let's be honest. That's not mm-hmm. true. Let's be honest. I watch your Insta story. <laughs> you don't know my life. <laughs> sure, I do. You don't know me. You do 24 Insta stories a day. <laughs> I know most of your life. So There's you only think, about 15 minutes that's left out of there. You think that <laughs> yeah. if you see my 24 Insta stories, which amounts to what five minutes of my day, you know my whole life. This is one of my biggest pet peeves. People think they know my whole life because they watch my Instagram stories. <laughs> that's, that's, that's your whole life. No, it's not. Yeah, no. I think Is we're supposed to mention. It. Yeah, well, mention Doug that? put that up there yeah, way too late like, for us to well, put it right there. Earlier, we'll 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 put it in the pot. We'll put it in the episode. Uh, we'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah, we'll get it in the episode right. for sure. Right. Well, whatever. My point is that San Jose is boring. San Jose's whack. No, what are you talking about? There's LA and San Jose aren't really that much different. No, they're not. You can right. go to Santa Cruz. Uh, yeah, you're, you're talking about being around like famous How people. How are they similar? 
How Dude, off. Netflix is up here. What are you talking you about? You guys don't have Erewhon. Whole Foods is the same difference. No, it's not. Yeah. Oh, god. oh my god, it's not. I'm cringing. Oh god, no. Erewhon. Erewhon has it's a little so bit better different. quinoa. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a big enough. It's not a big enough difference. We have like real farms. No, I mean you're right in the in the um, entertainment podcasting you know space like that. L A has got a ton of people. Mm-hmm. But had I not lived in L A, I I probably would have never met you. Right. But that doesn't mean you need to stay there. I don't know. If you lived in San Jose, right. I'm sure we'd cross paths. That's true. We <laughs> would have met you a lot earlier. Yeah. And, what, and what's better, having you know 50 acquaintances in your space that you know or one really powerful, strong one that actually cares about you? Which one is more powerful? Mm, that's in I your don't corner. have some connections there that care about me. I'm, I didn't say you don't. I'm just oh, asking yeah. what do you think is but, more but powerful. what have they done for you? Right. What have they done for you lately? Lately. What? <laughs> what have you done for me lately? What are, okay, what is your end game with this conversation? There is know. no end game. I think what would re- happen uh, if tomorrow I moved to San Jose? What I, nothing, because I'm not giving you anything. Yeah, yeah. see. So yeah. My, my point, <laughs> I wanted people to, I think it's He's a really planting good. planting seeds right now. That's I think it's all. a really good conversation just to have because a lot of, I, we've met a lot of people uh, in this space that are in a very similar space as you are, meaning like where you're at with your business. And, you know, we, Mind Pump has not gone viral and, and, you know, we don't have a million people that subscribe to the YouTube or the podcast right now, but we've generated a very successful business that's continuing to grow quarter over quarter. And we'll continue to do that over the next five to 10 years because we've built an incredible foundation. And that is far, we may never, you know, it's great. We may never get more more listeners, although we are, but we may never get that much more listeners, but we will be able to make five to $10 million a year off of what we're building. And, and I tell these guys all the time that this is going to be the hardest decision that we will have to make once we are paying ourselves the money that we always wanted to pay ourselves. We'll look at each other and go, do you want to keep growing this thing? Or do you want to maybe even let go and thin some of the herd? And pay ourselves even more and just cruise and do what we love, the parts and the aspects of the business that we love. And that is an incredible position to have created for yourself and to be in. And most people won't reach that because they have no clue how to get there because they're focused on the wrong parts of building a business. And I find it really common in the younger generation right now because of the social media fake bullshit, because we see people who have a million YouTube subscribers and they're driving their Mercedes Benz around and they're, you know, showing all the cool aspects of their life. Well, they and just so, rented one. So, right, right. So we think they're really successful and they're really good business owners and they're not. They're not at all. And so that's all I, that's, I'm just asking that because well, I'd like to hear dialogue no, from someone your age. that's a common misconception. People think that if they get more followers on Instagram, they make more money and has nothing to do with it. Right. Like, there are people with so many followers who don't make any money. There are people who have no followers who have killer businesses and are making a ton of money. And that's one of the things like I get asked that all the time by people. This is, I think goes back to the not wanting to ask questions. Nothing annoys me more than when someone acts like they want to like get to know me. And the first thing when we sit down, how do I build a following on Instagram? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Fuck you. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to build on that attitude. Right. <laughs> like, you know, so, okay. But, I think you're sitting on three hundred to six hundred thousand dollars a year. Don't even realize it. Okay, what do you want me to do? So, well, I think you first have to find a way to get out of what's making most of the money right now, which is taking up most of your time. Which I know exactly what that's like. No, I know, and I'm, that's what I'm trying to. I love out. the idea of you getting going down the path of the eBooks and getting those done. Those got to be a priority for you, for sure. If that means you got to eat fucking top ramen for the next couple months and, and live poor, I can't. They're not paleo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Bread but, now is back on <laughs> back on the menu. But you de- you definitely need to and 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 or and you and the way you can kind of naturally do that. My recommendation would be to like naturally. So if you're I don't know how many coaching clients are you doing right now? Give me a number approximately. Mm, I have people who come in. You mean like who are per week? The, one, the ones that are make, in? where you're making the most money. Yeah, the ones that you're who are like vers- locked into a thing. Sure, uh, probably like twenty five. Okay, so. Those 25 people, I, what I would do is I would start to, I would increase my rate significantly and hope it drops to 12 people. Mm-hmm. And those 12 people are now are paying you, hopefully, almost the same money you were making for 20. And even if it's a little bit less, 
it's okay because you're going to lose just a little bit of money, way less responsibility because you're only helping 12 people that would have been willing to pay you the extra $100 a month or whatever that you were considering not raising up to. And now you can use that time to free yourself up to knock out the things that are more Mm. scalable in your business. That's what I would do. Yeah, that's kind of what I did, what I'm doing. Well, I would do it again. 25 is still too many people then. Well, Go because higher. people are finishing out things. Okay. 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 So you're in the middle of that happening right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay, good for you. All right. So that should hopefully free up a bunch of time. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. But my point is that's why it's like all in the future because people are locked in to packages for like three to six months. Right. Right? So I'm like, I can raise things now, but I still have to finish out people, you know? Right, right. That's um, understandable. Yeah. So it's just time. that's the, That's near future though for you. Three to six months is no big deal. Yeah. It'll be here before you know it. And if you're already thinking like that, that's your transition. I think that's a, an incredibly mm-hmm. smart thing for you to do. Okay, good. If I'm Adam approved, well, I guess go. I'm there you go. Right. There you go. I guess we can bring you're on, on your way. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Enough enough tarot card reading for today. That's all I needed. Yeah. Although I'm pretty excited about those readings, Justin. About I your tarots? I, uh, you your tarots? Tarots. Tarot cards? It told me what I needed to know. Yeah, that uh, I'm doing everything right. You know what it is? This is what it is. As I was listening to your guys' readings, or as I listened to other people's readings, I try to pretend that they're for me and see if my mind automatically tries to connect it to things. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? And it does. Yep. And that's usually what happens. It's, that's usually what it's happens. It's just like uh, the astral signs yeah. or whatever. Oh, dude, yeah. this hot weather, man. Ugh. You know, it's just the, stagnant in here. The, it's that, not moving. It smells the, like armpits. That and yeah. the flies, Probably dude. Me. The fly, I hate when the flies pick up right now, and that's what's happening right now. We're going to close the doors. You know what? Speaking of flies, the I'm really impressed. Okay, my biggest thing that I was nervous about when Taylor started, you know, we let Taylor take a hold of the, the front office area, mm-hmm. and he did that, the plant design. Oh, the planted design? Oh. Yes. So he when he did that, so I, I reached out. I know somebody who has had that thing. You can see it. On our YouTube channel, we've already done some videos, right? Where yeah, that's in the background. Yeah, oh, yeah, it looks no. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, but what when before we were going to get it, the thing that we were going back and forth on is I had reached out to a, a buddy of mine who you don't want spiders. He said that it attracts bugs, no and spiders. I'm like, how does it attract bugs if it's fake? It's not. It's real moss. No, it's fake. No, it is. It is fake. It's, it's fake. fake. You it's didn't fake. know that was fake, but I it thought it was still real moss. Attracts I thought I thought it was real moss. Doug, it doesn't. But that's that doesn't cool. need to be. Well, I mean, this no one look, doesn't, but look, look, look. I'm going to read up here. I think it is. It's made with real moss that is stabilized. Boom. What do you mean stabilized? It's they, they do something to it to like freeze it where it is, but it's made with real moss right there. How wouldn't it die? Yeah. No, you, I you think give it water or I don't, anything. No, you, you don't have to take care of it. You don't have to water it. Well, obviously, because yeah, no one's just saying. <laughs> I was like, how's it still? We've had, we've had it for months and nobody's watered it yet. In good know. condition. That's crazy. No, no, no. But yeah. it's nice looking. Well, well, shout out to those very guys, nice. man. They did a good job. Yeah, so yeah. We, we appreciate the love they did over do here. A very at, good uh, job. The, Stepped our game up for us. That was huge. Right. Hey, Doug, bring on the bird, yeah? Yeah. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from Benno Greenaway. Looking to increase my carb intake, but rice seems to increase my inflammation in my elbow. What's your favorite go-to carb other than rice and grains? That's interesting. Sounds like he noticed. Sounds like he has a food intolerance to rice. I was gonna say because yeah. that's not very common, right? No, rice is rice so, is really good yeah, for rice me. Is easy to you know where assimilate. there's you know where there's a larger percentage of people with rice intolerances. Asia, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Asian countries because yeah, well, they, they obviously all the they time. Eat more rice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you look him up to see if he was Asian, Doug? No, <laughs> Benno and Greenaway is not. I think that's a a Northern European name. Really? Yeah. We're, we're totally assuming. Yeah. Well, you know, I, one of the ways that, like, so I increase calories. So when I am in, trying to to gain or put size on, and I'm trying to increase calories, I just make like my own my own homemade smoothie. So I'll take like the. I had one of these. They're good. Yeah. No. It's it's. I mean, fruit fruit will jump your calories real quick. Mm-hmm. So, and I'll pair it with like our Organifi smoothie. And I like Organifi when I'm doing like fruit smoothie. So I've, I go back and forth. I've shared this before on the podcast. Uh, I use both our Organifi uh, 
protein, and then I also still use whey. Mm. I like the whey when I'm doing things like chocolate, peanut butter, my coffee smoothie that I make. If I make fruit stuff, so strawberry, banana mm. smoothie, things like that. If or if I, even if I put like a, I'll even if you really want to bump the calories up, like I'll put yogurt and stuff inside the mm-hmm. um, inside the smoothie. So I like doing that, so I can, can actually control my calories and intake a lot easier to eat because I'm measuring out the. Fruit How many or, calories are your shakes typically? Oh, it depends on the goal. Back in the day when I was a kid, I used to make shakes that were... Did you guys make shakes when you were a kid back in the day? Just, just massive calorie shakes? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I used to like throw a few raw eggs in there with like peanut butter and then like... Whole milk. Whole milk and chocolate and... Yeah, it was it was a total calorie Oh, it's bomb. terrible. Yeah. I like the Organifi protein with the green juice. Have you guys tried mixing the two? I actually have not. Protein it's, with the green juice. Yeah, so vanilla, the vanilla Organifi protein with hmm. the green, and just this, just like that, just either in coconut See, milk I or like water. I like chocolate and milk together, or chocolate and mm. mint together, mm. so I could see doing that. So, I'll try it out, but I mean, this person is obviously trying to chase getting more calories, I think they're right? trying so, to get more more starches, more carbs in Yeah, more, or, and, and what I think that, obviously, that's so probably fruit is to a good gain. answer to that. Yeah, right? yeah, so I think fruit's like a really good answer fruit's to that. Fruit's good. The problem with fruit... If, for me, at least, is when I you, you're, it works great for smoothies. But if you try to eat a shit ton of fruit, good oh, luck. Yeah, 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 you're gonna be there yeah. for a little while. No, yeah. it's it's great to just. just and here's a, a great here's a great starch. Here's a fantastic starch, especially if you tend to have food intolerance issues. Now, normally, I would recommend rice because rice seems to work for most people. But if you're in one of those rare situations or rare instances where rice doesn't work for you, try buckwheat. Buckwheat oh, yeah. is an excellent source of carbohydrates. It's gluten free. It's easier to digest than rice for a lot of people. It is even for me. Like I can eat a shit ton of buckwheat and I feel like I ate nothing what, in my gut. What is quinoa like? Is there gluten typically in quinoa or is that an No, No, quinoa is gluten-free. Quinoa is uh, relatively high in protein for being a... I don't think it's a grain. I think it's a seed. Some kind of sprout or something? I like believe it? so, but it's it's a really good... It's another really, really good source. I haven't eaten that in a long but time. Have you I guys ever it. tried buckwheat, like uh, the hot buckwheat cereal? I've had buckwheat uh, pancakes. pancakes. yeah. So when I've you go to uh, Whole Foods sells, and, it, and actually Thrive Market has it as well, you can buy this... Uh, it's like this mix, and it's a powder, and you... Not really a powder. It's like ground up, kind of like cream of wheat or whatever. Mix it with some water, throw in some butter, or you can throw in milk, or you can throw in cheese, Justin, or bacon yeah. or whatever. It's fucking amazing. What brand are you using from Thrive? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember the name of the brand. Is, that, is it the same one as the, the pancake mix, people? Because uh, I no. remember you got me on that, and I was ordering that from Thrive for like, a Oro wheat for a hot, guy that... No, there's a different... I'm so bad with remembering yeah, names. Yeah, no, no. But it, you, you, you turned can us, find it all on You there. turned us on to the protein pancakes from Thrive, and I started ordering the those. The paleo, those are the paleo pancakes or whatever. So oh, birch not, benders. Yes, that's No, it's not birch yeah. benders. No, no, no. Uh, so no, else. this is specifically buckwheat itself. So buckwheat's one of my favorites. So you take that, and then you mix it in something? You just make it like hot cereal. So you, you, you put it in water. So you boil water. Oh. You add it to the boiling so water, and you stir it, it just it, like you're making cream of wheat. So is it like cream of wheat? Or is it-, it is, except it's a little bit. It's not quite as like... I don't know how to explain it. It's it's in between cream of wheat and, and rice in terms of its consistency. Or oatmeal. Yeah, but it's super, super light. It's very starchy. It's dense with carbohydrates. Mm. It's one of my favorite, favorite sources of carbohydrates besides rice. I do love, love rice, and I can digest rice pretty well. What about well. like potatoes, sweet potatoes? Potatoes are excellent. So are sweet potatoes. Oh, the only the only problem with like sweet potatoes and yams, I think they're a great source for someone excellent. who's trying to lean out yeah. and who's yeah. like, because it's, oh, it's not, not, not getting the calorie. Yeah, it's not very calorie dense. I, I mean, you could eat a whole sweet potato and it's only mm-hmm. a couple well, hundred. Well, I'm adding like butter, bacon, and you know what I'm saying? Cheese. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> by the end of the day, it's like a lot of calories. Yeah. I can yeah. I can overeat potatoes too for some reason, potatoes will actually bother my gut if I eat a whole bunch. Because trust me, I've tried, like you know, calorie loading on all kinds of different types of starches. Yeah, I've done it where I've eaten lots of potato. I've done it where I've eaten lots of rice, um, lots of corn. The ones that'll bother, and, and these are all gluten free because I stay away from gluten. For me personally, I'm assuming this person too. The gluten free sources of carbohydrates that seem to work best for me and for my clients are white rice. Uh, buckwheat and quinoa. Those are that's like the the, now, the winners. Is yeah, is sourdough good. bread considered no gluten or low gluten? Lower gluten. Lower because of the fermentation process, it breaks down the gluten. So people who have because if you I have, actually, if you have doing, celiacs, you can't eat sourdough, right? Right, right, right. But yeah. if you're nor- so, I've been I cut out a long time ago. I cut out bread, tortillas, things like that. Mm-hmm. And I've recently in the probably just the last few months, 
reintroduce uh, sourdough bread. It's become a consistent thing almost every morning. You saw me eating it today. Mm-hmm. I've been eating it with my my bacon and eggs. You just as long as it's real sourdough. You know, a lot of pl- com- places will will make bread and then they'll flavor it to, to taste flavor like, it. Yeah, and it's fucking I regular. So regular bread. Because oh, I've had funny. some that have just really I got a violent reaction. You know, <laughs> versus the other ones that were like, it's a from, fucked up move. It yeah. is. You can you have to look at the the ingredients and it'll tell you what. Fuck, the I knew it. And it'll say fermented. You know, whatever yeah, in there. That's, that's well, so shady. far I've been lucky because with whatever whatever Bills is serving over there, it's uh, it seems to be sitting pretty well with mm-hmm. me. Where normally when I do like regular be- bread or when I was doing wheat bread before, I definitely get like a bloat like right after. Do you really? Oh yeah. What about pasta? Um, you know what? I haven't had pasta in a long time, dude. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I, I haven't done pasta in a, 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 a really long time. So I bought some gluten free pasta, but it was made with corn and rice, and I should have known better because corn. I can eat corn. But if I push corn too hard, too, I'll start to yeah. get some gastro issues. Corn doesn't work with me very very good. You don't even digest it. It comes right out. Yeah, same. yeah. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> there and it I, is. And it, fuck, it really bothered my gut. So now when I go gluten-free pasta, it's got to be just what, it's got to be just the rice mm-hmm. option. Mm-hmm. But it does suck if you're somebody who's got an intolerance to, to gluten and an intolerance to rice because almost every gluten-free food you're going to find, that's going to be the alternative, right? Buckwheat, I can tell you right now, I think is going to make it's going to start becoming much more popular in Russia and Eastern Europe. Buckwheat is a staple. That's one of their number one sources of carbohydrates. Really? Yes, it is. Okay, you got me sold. Now I'm going to try it. Oh, thanks, Doug. Doug pulled that's up their thrive, and thrive angry. So organic oh, they, buckwheat. Oh, that's the see. There is a pancake one, but it's not Birchbender. It's, no, this it's one's Arrowhead oh, Mills. Uh-huh. And Both then, of them are, and they make one that's maple buckwheat flakes cereal. Um, and then there's a hot cereal that you can God, make as well. Three dollars, four dollars. I tell you what, Thrive Market, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. Yep. Shout out to them. It's Killing not com- it. Not even a commercial for them, but I tell you what, these guys fucking exactly. kill it. Exactly. Exactly. Next question is from VMA, Mister Black. Can you still be overtraining without being sore? You yeah. know, this is a good question because how many times we've mentioned on the show that being really, really sore is an indication that you did too much. Yeah. So I'll, I can imagine people who are thinking, well, I mustn't be overtraining because I'm, I'm not, not sore. I'm not sore. That's a really. I'm glad you picked this question because it, I actually would might even venture to say that. It's more common that there's people that are overtraining and are not sore, and that's part of why they're they're overtraining is they don't realize that they're overtraining because they're still chasing being sore, and their body has just become so adapted to whatever movements they're doing or whatever program they're following, yeah. so they just keep adding volume, adding volume, adding volume, and so the body's not really getting sore from that, and so they think they're not overtraining, but they're just constantly you know, caught in what you call the recovery trap all the time. So this this happened to me years ago. The, the first time I really learned about because I used to think that. I used to think, well, if I'm not sore, I mustn't be overtraining. And so years ago, I was probably 27 maybe, 27, 28. So it's, it's about over 10 years. I was went back and started reading Arnold Schwarzenegger's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding again. And that's a book when I was a kid, I used to, I used to look through all the time. It's one of my favorite, favorite. If you need a reference guide for old school free weight, mostly free weight exercises. It's the best, it's the best one there is. It just lists every single one. So I was going through and in the back, it lists recommended workouts. And then it also tells you Arnold's workout. So like what Arnold used to do in preparation for Mr. Olympia. Now Arnold was known for doing high volume, like fucking high volume and high frequency. He would do these double split routines where he'd work out once in the morning and then again, once at night and he would hit the, he would split the body, but he would also hit the whole body three to four days a week. So that guy was a total maniac. So I'm going through this thing and right around this time I'm experimenting with more frequency and I'm realizing that it's working for my body. And so of course I do the next logical thing that my, you know, my, my male brain makes me do, which is fuck, we're just going to (laughs) do, we're just going to go for it and do the routine that Earl did. So that's what I did. Me and my workout partner, decided we would do a double split routine and follow Arnold's actual routine, which was literally 20 sets per body part or more <laughs> per, and it was three times a week. So I was doing 60 sets Damn, per, crazy, body, per, per, per body part per week. Shout out to Do- Joe Donald. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> so here's what happened. The only book he read. Here's the crazy earlier. thing that happened, right? I did this thing and- Obviously, of course, the first week I got really, really sore. Mm -hmm. But by the second and the third week, I stopped getting sore. And I thought that that was a good sign. I'm like, oh, shit, this is totally working. I'm going to totally be progressing. No. As I kept pushing that program, 
not only did my body stop progressing, but I started regressing to where my st- my strength started to decline mm. and my performance started to decline. I started having sleep issues, well, like all the classic Right, symptoms. aren't those good indicators too, right? Your strength diminishes like uh, significantly. And I've had that actually happen where I was just like honing in on this same way of training to like the, the peak of it. And I'm like testing myself and I did not, I just felt my strength starting to get away from me like almost immediately. You've, I think Sal, you've mentioned this before and I, and this is when I really pieced this together was because this was definitely I was a classic case of the overtraining for sure. I was the, just figured the more I trained, the more I lifted, the bigger I was going to get. And that was just how it worked. And, you know, I just was never able to consume enough and I wasn't letting myself completely recover to grow and build like I need to. And the first sign where I started to piece this together was when I would start letting myself have two or three days off in a row. And then when I come back that fourth day and I was actually stronger. Yep. And so I think that's a good indicator for people is, you know, if you take days off consecutively Mm -hmm. and get back in the gym and and when you go to lift again, you're as strong or significantly stronger. It means you did something right, which was take time off. Right. Yeah. So that's the big one. I mean, here's the thing when it comes to judging whether or not something's working for your body. There are lots of signs and you have to look at all of them. It's not just one. Now, one sign can, can, can many times be pretty clear. Like if you're super sore and you can't move you don't need i don't need to necessarily look at other signs and signals to to tell that i'm probably doing too much but you got to look at all of them and when you're when you're trying to judge whether or not you're doing too much excessive soreness is one of them but it's not the only one and it doesn't have to be present the other ones include my favorites which are my performance if my performance in the gym starts to decline and i'm working hard then many times that's telling me that, okay, I need some time off. My sleep is another one. Now, if Mm -hmm. I keep pushing it, this is what I notice. If I keep pushing it, keep pushing, and I'm hard-headed about it, and my workouts keep, I try to keep ramping them up and my performance isn't increasing, the next thing to fall is my sleep. And I'll notice I'll go to bed and I'll feel restless. Mm -hmm. It's a very strange feeling. Like, I'm exhausted, but I can't sleep. I experienced this, uh, especially when I was training in jiu-jitsu, really, really hard and pushing my body, where you know when you're sparring really hard, you're not necessarily monitoring your intensity because you're sparring with other people, so you have to push yourself. And I would come home, and I wouldn't be able to fucking sleep. I'd lay there exhausted, and I'm like, why you can't, can't I like pick your arms up or legs? But you, yeah, you just can't. Do you ever that? You ever get that, that for football? Yeah, football, especially when uh, we were we were in like just like double days and we'd, we'd train like twice a day and then we'd practice in between and it was just like my body was just shredded to, to bits and I was like so overly exhausted mm-hmm. but I couldn't sleep very well mm-hmm. and, and I would wake up and it would just repeat the cycle again where I would just felt like just worthless at that point. Yeah. The other one is a loss of libido. That's another sign of overtraining. Like when I'm pushing my body too hard, I just don't have the same kind of libido. Libido is actually a great <laughs> signal by itself to tell you kind of if you're doing the right things. Like I know when my when my workouts are on point and I'm getting stronger, my libido almost always kind of follows along. I don't know if you guys noticed that as well. Where I feel I do. Where I feel like, oh shit, like everything's on point and mm-hmm. I'm also feeling more uh random. Yeah, I toned down my masturbating a little bit. You did? Yes, a little bit. Yes. So those are the things that, you know, to really pay attention to. But I think loss of performance is a really good one. I also remember back in the day, I used to hate this. I don't know if you guys ever heard this. But back in the day, people would say this stupid, stupid line, which was, there's no such thing as overtraining. Only, there's only under eating. Oh, you guys ever hear that stupid That was that. a popular saying. For what hot. a dumb... <laughs> what a, like, well, and there's a lot of athletes out there that don't even believe overtraining exists. Yeah. Which is hilarious to me. No, it's for sure. It for sure exists. I would say, look, if you're not performing, if your performance isn't improving, if your sleep is off, if your body's not changing, uh, there's a few things you could look at. Change your routine. You could look at taking some time off, or you could look at working out more and working out harder. Well, yeah, I think you guys hit on it as far as taking that time. Like maybe it's just a day, maybe it's a week off and then just just if you even have an inkling that you've been pushing it really hard just do that experience it see if it either like charges you like a ridiculous amount or if it's just just like not real noticeable but 
it's not going to hurt you just well, to I, see like whether I, or not I, you've been overtraining. I think that saying that Sal said that where that came from is just because a majority of people don't train enough, right? A majority of people aren't consistent right. enough. A majority of people, so it's kind of like the, that was yeah, like, consistency is the first battle. It's that motivation. Yeah, it's like talking to the average person, like, right. oh, I'm not getting progress. I'm working out once a week. Oh, it's too much. Because so you know? right, right. Really. So it's you know who I'm talking to. Like the message is going to be different for you know whoever this person is, right? So if this person, if you tend to fall in the person, the group of people that never or rarely ever miss a day in the gym and you're very consistent and you love to train yeah. then my conversation is different to you mm -hmm. if you're somebody who's kind of just getting started and you're trying to figure this whole sore over training thing out and you're hearing one message from one guy telling you you need to train more and you're hearing mind pump say like be careful you're not over training and, and then you're asking a question like this well you may be somebody who's just just now getting in the swing of things and you maybe you're you're not sore because you might be following the same yeah it's definitely for somebody who's been doing it for quite a while right now, Here's an interesting observation. Uh, I, I've made this argument before a long time ago that it's easier for me to overdo intensity than it is to overdo uh, frequency when it comes to workouts, at least when I would train people. Like I could take a beginner who's deconditioned and I could really fuck them up in one workout to the point where I've overdone it. But I can monitor and adjust intensity to the point where I could probably train them every single day. I'm just going to do very, very low intensity type movements. So that's another thing to keep in, 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 in mind. Sometimes overtraining doesn't mean you're working out too much. It may mean you just back off on the intensity a little bit. So you don't, might not even need to have a couple days off. Maybe you just do a week of easy workouts where you're in the gym and just going through the movements and feeling a little bit of the pump and getting a little bit of the stretch and doing the full range of motion type stuff and then see if your performance you know, starts to improve again. Right. Next question is from FitM28. What's the difference between NEAT and cardio? Ooh. Yeah, so the, the specific differences are NEAT represents all of the non-cardio, non-workout, non-planned exercise activity that you do throughout the day. So it's just your, your daily activity that's not a scheduled type of workout. Right. Cardio is scheduled workout. Now, no, the, they, technically, cardio is when you hit a certain heart rate for people too, right? Everyone has a different cardio threshold. Oh, so, yeah. That's when you're getting real technical. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. you were to be real technical about it, I mean, even when you first get on a treadmill and you and you just start kind of jogging or moving, even though you're no longer in knee and you're technically doing work, you're not technically doing cardio yet until your heart rate mm -hmm. hits a, a number and one, and that's going to be different to each person. So that's when you talk about like VO2 max and testing that and finding yeah. out they share with you like what your cardio threshold yeah, is. Yeah, or your optimal zone. <laughs> no, you basically just shifting systems right yep yeah. yep and I, I mean adam made a big deal about this when we kind of first started the show uh, talking a lot about neat and how it was something that he prescribed and i thought it was absolutely brilliant uh and and i'll tell you why i think neat increasing your neat for the average or for most people is superior to trying to schedule cardio and figure out how much cardio you oh, need yeah. now here's why L let's just imagine you do more neat and versus this you know more cardio and they equal the same calorie burn, they equal the same you know, benefits in terms of fat loss and all that stuff. That's fine and dandy, but here's why NEAT is superior beyond that. Even if they were the same in terms of results, NEAT is superior because when you monitor and adjust NEAT, what you're literally do doing is you're changing your lifestyle. Cardio yep. being scheduled within your day, taking an hour out to, to, you know, to do it, is different than me monitoring my day-to-day -day and saying, I need to move more. That tends to be... I've noticed with clients since really implementing this, it tends to be something that they put in their life. Right. So mm -hmm. much easier to, mm -hmm. to manage. Yes. So much easier. Because not only that, but then you add in which one's more likely to be overused or abused, right? You can't go wrong just moving throughout the day more and being mm -hmm. more active is like just like walking. But you absolutely can overdo cardio. Yeah. So there's there's more risk for you to over over prescribe with cardio than there is doing something like neat, which is just moving around. And like back to what Sal is saying, like to me, when you start teaching and speaking to clients, just kind of steps in their movement, it's much easier for them to ma manage where, you know, when you got to go do cardio and you know, you got to go sweat on a treadmill for a half hour, yeah, you got to go hour. change your clothes. You got to schedule yeah, the time. Yeah. Get on the cardio. And you're thinking about like, do I have it in me to do that right mm. now? But how hard is it for anybody to just be like, Hey, you know what? I know you really want to sit here and watch three more Netflix shows. Cause you've already watched five and you're sucked into the series. You know, is it that much effort for you just to get your fucking ass off the couch and just go for a stroll and yeah. walk outside? Mm -hmm. Like, it, believe it or not, that's a, a much easier and task. just being much more productive. Right. You know? like, yes. Like, like, using that, like, and this is really how I've personally, like, adopted it is 
like there's an extra incentive and motivation to go do projects and do things around the house, get things done. Like yes. it, 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 it improves, um, you know, the lives around you too. So it's like you're, you're the, the, the problem Meat I have saves lives. It does, man. But, <laughs> but think about it. Think about like people that really, really get into fitness all of a sudden. Right. And they're, they're on this quest of like getting in the ultimate shape and it's, it's so self-centered. And a lot of times it's really hard to pull people in your camp like, hey, yeah, rah, rah, rah. You know, you find people that are like, you know, helping you out. But like this is one of those things that also brings in the people around, brings in your family. Like they see you up active. They see you doing things. You know, you're helping them out because it's advantageous to do that Mm -hmm. as opposed to just I'm fucking running on, you know, a hamster wheel to, to get to where I need to go. No, me, me, me. It's a hundred, you're hundred percent right, Justin. The people that I, that I work with that I prescribe meat to instead of cardio, which is now all of them. What, I, what they end up telling me, because we end up talking about it. What they end up saying is, Oh, I find myself doing more chores around the house. Why? Because they're sitting there doing nothing or watching TV or, or on social media. Yep. They know that they probably should increase their steps or whatever. And they're like, ah, but it's not scheduled cardio. They just know they need to move more. And they're like, you know what? I'm just going to go wash the windows or I'm going to go do the yard work or I'm going to go take the clean my room out. or take yeah. the dog out. And they end up, it's, it's, an, it's an additional incentive to get them to do their normal chores or to do more of them. Mm-hmm. You actually become more productive. And that's my point. My point is, with neat is that when you pay attention to neat and focus on neat, you end up it, it become it's so much easier to incorporate that into your life than scheduled cardio is. Scheduled cardio is an easy thing to to cut out. You know what I mean? It's easy for me if I'm the average person to say, you know, oh, I got to do. I'm supposed to do 40 minutes of cardio. I don't want to do 40 minutes of cardio, so I'm not going to do it. Versus, oh, I'm supposed to get another 2,000 steps in today. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go wash the car mm-hmm. or I'm going to go, you know, go for a walk outside or I'm going to go in the, in the backyard and do some yard work or whatever. It's easier to incorporate into your life. Therefore, it becomes a lifestyle versus a scheduled workout. And, a- and as personal trainers, the easier you can make something a lifestyle, the more successful you are as a trainer and the more successful your client yeah, You really get them to buy in. It's also, it. it's also a better way for you to lean out and guarantee you're going to hold on to more lean body mass. Yes. So if, and this is how I used to use it with competing, is I, I it cracked me up when I would see these competitors that would you know be doing these hours and hours of cardio like you're sending a signal to the body to adapt and get leaner faster harder because you're pushing the body faster and harder where if you're just kind of moving around and you're low calorie also the fact that your your body is going to probably metabolize mostly fat and use that as a a primary source of energy but if you are calorie deprived and you're pushing the body really really hard constantly well and it and it starts to run out of that source well that's where you get into this point where the body starts to adapt and lose muscle mass so there's less risk of losing lean body mass by using meat versus pushing so they've done they've done studies on this well they'll compare one cardio session versus two or three cardio sessions but equal amount of time so in other words you know they'll have a group of people do 60 minutes of cardio once a day versus another group of people who does 20 minutes of cardio three times a day or two 30-minute uh, sessions. So they divide it up. The ones that divide it up burn more body fat, even though it's the same total amount mm-hmm. of time. Now, NEAT is split up in, in much more than that, typically. If I'm aiming for 15,000 or 12,000 steps in the day, there's probably going to be blocks where I'm doing a lot of that, but then there's also throughout the day where I'm kind of throwing in and injecting periods of, of, of time where I'm actually moving a little bit more. And so you find that you spread it out throughout the whole day. So following along that that theory of what those the studies seem to suggest or show, if we go along that logic, NEAT would also, and it, I think it's probably splitting hairs, to be honest with you, but if you're somebody that is really high performance and, and you care about every little hair, like I'm saying, Need like is going to be like, superior. Like a competitor. Like this a is, competitor. This need. is how I coached every single competitor. You don't even have a mad cardio unless they no, absolutely have to. That's car- the way we use cardio was because you couldn't get your steps in. You couldn't get your knees. So, like as I as I get a uh, competitor closer to stage, it's we're talking about okay that when we here we are and we'll say eight weeks out 
and we're moving 10,000 steps. And then we're seven weeks out, we're moving 12,000 steps. And then we're moving 14,000 steps and 60. And then eventually I've got them up to 20,000 to 24,000 steps, which that's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a lot for somebody who's just going to be walking around. So then you may have to use a cardio session to get there. But if you can just be active and do that, I use the weight training and the cal- the calorie management mm-hmm. as the way for them to lean the lean out and very very successful holding on to their lean body mass. Yeah, yeah. Now all things being equal, all, the most important factor here when you're when you're thinking about your workout or cardio, the most important factor is not which cardio machine or which form of cardio is the most effective for burning body fat or which method is the most effective for burning fat, body fat. That's not the most important factor. For most people, the most important factor is which one am I going to do the Forever. most consistently yeah, and the longest. Yeah, right. And neat is lifestyle. Cardio is structured, scheduled workout. So I think that answers itself right, right. there. Next question is from Anthony Lifts 18 For most of my shifts, I sit down watching cameras. I walk around the building sometimes, and my shifts are usually eight hours. Even after taking a pre-workout or drinking coffee, I still feel like I don't have energy. Any tips or ideas why I feel so tired after work to the point where I'm too tired to go to the gym? So something that I discovered, and I don't want to say I discovered, but I maybe rediscovered or really started to understand when I first developed the trigger session concept for MAPS Anabolic, which was, I don't know, six years ago, uh, maybe longer, was that when I'm doing trigger sessions and I'm doing them three times a day, so I do morning, afternoon, evening, there's definitely times where I did not want to do a seven minute trigger session. I was just tired, lethargic. Maybe I'm watching a movie. Maybe I'm on the couch, but I know it's time to do it. And during this period of time, I'm testing the program out to see how it works. So I'm like, I am not going to skip a trigger session. I have to do it. So I'd pick my ass up, even if I was whatever I was doing, tired, whatever. And I do the trigger session. And every single time after five to seven minute trigger session, I feel like I had a little, I, I had like a jolt of energy. It was incredible and it worked every single time. Yeah. And so for this person right here and you're saying you don't you don't feel you don't feel any energy, you're lethargic cuz you're sitting all day. You're right. sitting down watching cameras all day. The, one of the best things you could do is do your priming session at work before you go to the gym. That which doesn't require a lot of energy. This is why I like doing this because if I'm going to the gym and I'm tired and I'm thinking of my workout, that seems like a nightmare. But if I think oh I'm going to do priming and start to fire some muscles and stretch and just move, Movement creates energy. It yeah. really, really does. Movement. I mean, it's. I mean, it's so momentum based. I get that way too from sitting, just from doing the podcast, and I'll have to get up, do squats, or like walk around because then I have a commute too to get home. And mm-hmm. so, like, I if I don't do all the little movements, you know, push ups, grab something, do some little bicep curls, or swing the mace bell around. Um, I definitely feel the difference of that like very rapidly. It, my, my body just, it starts to kind of shut down. I get tired, I get lethargic, you know, I get home, I'm tired, I don't want to do anything. And so for me, it's like, it's essential that I do little things uh, throughout the day to make sure that like I carry that momentum going, uh, you know, in, in, back home. I, I would echo the same thing. And then I would also potentially address the pre-workout and coffee drinking that if you've been doing that consistently for a long time, you're so used to that. Maybe fasting from that for a while, maybe Mm -hmm. a week or two off of coffee and keep in mind that's going to suck. Yeah. Right. Right. It's so that's not going to make you feel good instantly. Right. Obviously that you may have some deal, which also should be a flag that it's reintroducing. It will be fantastic. Right. So, and then when you reintroduce the the coffee and or pre-workout, it should make, I mean, make you feel amazing. This is, I love to use coffee and pre-workout this way. I've never been somebody who I like, I absolutely have to have my coffee. I love my coffee, but I don't have to have it. I can go days without it. No problem. And I was, I'm somebody who doesn't use pre-workout consistently. So when I do like, and, and today's an example, like I can, today it's hot in the studio. Our AC is not working. I feel a little tired and lethargic. I'm about to go train legs. There's probably a good chance that I'm going to go u- utilize one of the pre-workouts that we have laying around. And I, it, I know that it's going to fire me up because I don't you use, never use it. Right. So I think that could be a possibility, but I definitely agree when you have a job where you're kind of sitting, especially too focused in on like cameras, like looking, oh, you know man. what I'm saying? You're just staring at the same thing. Dude, over this is why this is slow death. This, so here's what I, this is, here's what I do. Okay. For me. And this is what I've recommended to other people. Now I am not the kind of person that can sit down and pay attention for long periods of time. It drives me fucking crazy. Unless I'm super focused and involved in what I'm doing, which I can also do. 
I am, that's why meetings for me are so difficult because we have meetings once or twice a week. We'll sit in these meetings and inevitably halfway through the meeting, what do I do? I get up, I stretch, I move, I squat to get my, my energy back up. I, I just can't handle it. So what I recommend to clients who are on situations like this is I say, look, every set an alarm on your phone and every 30 minutes do one or two stretches or exercises. That's yeah. it. It'll take you a grand total of 60 seconds. Try it out. Every 30 minutes, try it out. So if you're sitting down looking at, at you know uh, computer monitors for eight hours, that means that 16 times you're going to get up and you're going to do maybe 10 reps of squats or 10 push-ups or you're going to stretch your hamstrings yeah. or you know you're going to do so something else doing the power pose where you're getting full extension because you're do, so like protracted the whole time now think of the benefits you're definitely going to have more energy because you got up moved and stretched you're going to prevent muscle imbalances you're going to feel better you're going to burn more calories but that's probably about anywhere between 16 to 30 minutes of extra exercise activity on top of it. doesn't right. sound like much when you say, oh, every 30 minutes I'm going to do a minute, but eight hours, that's 16, 16 minutes right there that you just did every single day. Right. And when I recommend this to clients and they actually do this, oh, it's incredible. I, I, the type of you know feedback I get is uh, way better focus, uh, more productive at work because a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't want to take a break every 30 minutes. I'm not going to be as productive. Not true. You actually become more productive. Um, and then the the the, the pleasant side effects are, well, I lost like a couple pounds of body fat or I actually got a little stronger because I've been practicing push-ups every 30 minutes, you know, just doing like five or whatever. Now it's like I got to do 10 to feel the same type of intensity. Right. We, so don't, that, we don't talk about it a lot on the show. But we have we have bands. So, we, I mean, they'll, they'll be linked in the show notes. I know uh, what Jackie does. These, she'll make sure to put a link to the, to the bands. So the band setup comes with handles so you can do all kinds of stuff they come with a little door insert so you can put them into wedge them between a door up high down low the side like so you could literally get yourself a nice little workout priming session anything in between and it doesn't have to be crazy intense you don't got to be sweating your balls off in between just like sal saying a couple minutes every half hour hour can make a world of a difference that's what i did to one of my clients uh, she has a pair of bands and she sits at a desk for long periods of time and that's what she'll do. She'll either get up and do leg exercises or she'll stay seated, hook the bands around her feet, do some curls or do some shoulder presses just every 30 minutes. You could even have some fun with this. Like if I had a client that did this, I don't know what you're staring at on the screen, but I would hope to God it probably gives you something a little bit different to look kind at. Kind like every, a every, drinking game, but yeah, like, exercise. Right. So every time, like, so maybe he's like, I don't know, maybe he's a mall guy and he's watching like people coming in <laughs> out of the store. <laughs> yeah. It's like after every time 20 people come in or out, yeah. I'm going to get and do, I'm going to get up and do 20 squats or something like that, where yeah. try and have some fun with it since you're having to be stuck at work staring at a screen anyways. Maybe when so many things come across the screen, you have this little game that you play where you it, it do really, some movement. It really is funny because it sounds counter, right? At first, when you say, oh, if, if you're you're sitting and you're conserving energy you should have more at the end of it no but that's not true at all like well, when your body's getting adapted to that yeah you are that's why you feel lethargic and, t and tired i mean I, I couldn't imagine sitting down i bet you could, i bet you could out stare at a screen better than anybody yeah, yeah <laughs> you exactly. know what I'm saying? i bet you could stare at a that's screen that's what your body's adapted yeah, to. yeah exactly yeah. so i'd say get up and move every 30 minutes and definitely before when your shift is over or when it's about to be over and you're about to go to the gym i would do an eight to ten minute priming session which is ideal or a trigger session and then watch how you feel you'll start to get you'll start to notice that you feel like you're more motivated and have a little bit more energy to go to the gym and these trigger sessions and movements do stimulate a little bit of dopamine which dopamine is what gets us to do shit so give it a shot see what happens check this out if you go to mindpumpfree.com you can download up to like 12 free guides. We got free guides on there available for everybody. Mindpumpfree.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee.
guarantee. And you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support. And until next time, this is Mind Pump.